Good evening. ESPN's coverage of this season's FA Cup kicks off here in Crawley. We're very close to Gatwick Airport. And for Crawley Town, Swindon Town, for all the clubs still standing, one more victory means it could be Premier League class opposition next time round. Yeah, I think for me it's massive. I'm going to play at Wembley for Liverpool, so that's something that I'd like to change. The feeling is all your dreams coming true as a young kid. I have the big passion to win the FA Cup. The FA Cup, eh? Nothing quite like it. You can do it! An extraordinary moment in the first game of the competition proper. It is a big occasion, massive occasion. It's stunning! Another magical FA Cup moment. A sensational screamer. And the spirit of Wimbledon remains. Crawley Town are one of 11 clubs from outside the Football League still standing. They might be underdogs in terms of where they are in football's pyramid system, but ambitious owners have made a major investment in the playing squad. The Manchester City of non-league football is one description. They stand second in the Blue Square Bet Premier Division and they fancy their chances tonight. In the FA Cup sponsored by E.ON, Crawley Town versus Swindon Town brings together teams from the fifth and third tier of English football. Only 30 league places between the clubs. Swindon are too close to comfort to the relegation places in League One. It's not beyond the realms of possibility these teams will play in the same division next season. Swindon have to show last season's form that took them to the brink of promotion to the championship. Nice scarf. Lou Macari is alongside John Barnes. Lou led Swindon to successive promotions. What's your earliest FA Cup memory, by the way? I lost to Southampton, 1976. Uh, a game I try to forget, but ESPN keep re-showing it. <laughs> and uh, the more I see it on the telly, the more the goal looks offside. Bobby Stokes clean through the middle, six minutes from the end. Uh, before you know it, the ball's in the back of the net, Ray, and, and we've lost the cup. But that's the beauty of, of the FA Cup. It gives everyone a chance. Yeah, you had good moments too. Now, by the way, how calm, cool and collected does John Barnes look? And he arrived, what, 60 seconds before 60 we started? Seconds. 60 seconds. <laughs> back on the M40. Been? The M40, there's a lorry spread across the M40. <laughs> So we had to divert. So I left at half 11, Liverpool, but Lou had it right. Lou got the train. Yeah. Yeah. My others, remember, I remember, I can't remember, did you score that goal or did it come off your chest? In the that come off Jimmy Green off Jimmy Green off. Did he, uh, that was your goal or did Jimmy claim that goal? Jimmy claimed That's that one goal. of my early memories. I remember, you know, watching Manchester United and seeing Lou um, um, miss hit the shot uh, and coming off Jimmy Green off chest. Is, is it the same for you? Is it the final each year? This is sort of one of your earliest FA Cup memories? Yes, it is. Um, and we've had this discussion before, uh, considering I've lost five. Um, so I haven't got many happy memories. But some of my biggest memories are semi-finals, because really, I can tell you, the semi-final is not the place to lose. Getting mm. to the cup final, even when you lose, the fact that you're there for the whole, you know, you've got the build-up for the week. FA Cup final day is very special. The semi-final is not a place to lose, and I've, I've lost there as well. Well, I'll tell you what, it's very, very special to get the third round, and that's important for both these teams tonight. Do you agree the nearer you get to the match, you start making a case for the uh, lower league team? Well, I think long before the match, Ray, the lower league team's always got a chance. It is the FA Cup. It's, for me, the greatest cup competition in the world. It gives everyone a chance. And Swindon in the first round, I mean, they went to Plymouth and won 4-0. So you think that this game holds no fears for them. But the fact that it is the FA Cup, they will be nervous. Yeah, previous round, previous results don't really count for anything. But you know what we've said in the past, Ray? We've said that, you know, normally the pitch is a great level. You remember Ronnie Radford and you look it's at, lovely. you know, Cole Knight. The pitch is lovely. <laughs> but the places we've been before, you saw FC United, you saw Cambridge, although they didn't go through. They, and they, the, the, the non-league teams are matching the league teams and Crawley will match Swindon tonight because they're flying. Everyone's warming up. The pitch is terrific. And uh, I, I, think, I think when you look at these games, all of a sudden you can say to yourself, well, people are going to rise to the occasion, aren't they? But it's not even the question of rising to the occasion. I mean, Crawley are a very ambitious team. They're, you know, they're at the top of the league. Um, they've spent lots of, lots of money by their standards. They've signed, you know, Matt Tubbs and Richard Brody, two of the top scorers um, in, in, in this division last year. So it's not even the question of rising to the occasion. There isn't that much to choose between these two sides. Mm -hmm. OK, this is a big night for the players from both sides. Let's get the team news from Craig Burley and Derek Ray.
Thank you, Ray. Good evening to you. Well, Steve Evans, the Crawley manager, had a big dilemma ahead of this game. I say that because Crawley thumped Altrincham 7-0 in the last match, but he has, in fact, decided to make a couple of changes to that particular side. Let's have a look at the Crawley Town team, shall we? Defender Danny Hall and striker Jamie Cook making way for Kyle McFadgen, rested at the weekend with a suspension looming. And Richard Brody, who came off the bench in that game to score two goals one of them which has been described locally as Ricky Villa-esque. Swindon Town had an injury question mark hovering over Vincent Pericard. He trained yesterday and has been declared ready to go. Jonathan Douglas misses out tonight. Charlie Austin is one of the brightest young strikers in League One and has scored a grand total of 11 goals from 17 matches in all competitions this season. Craig, a couple of years ago, Swindon were on the wrong end of an upset in the FA Cup in the first round at Histon. A couple of the players involved then play from the start tonight. To what extent does that play on the minds of players? Oh, it's, I think it's certainly players and, uh, and the players' minds of that, there's no doubt. Uh, you never want to go out to teams in a lower division and you never mind that you're not even in the Football League. But Crawley have spent a, a lot of money. They're big spenders. They're second in the Blue Square Premier. Uh, and Swindon will know that. But they've got guys that can put the ball in the back of the net and Pericard and Austin. Pericard once played for Juventus up front. And of course Crawley have as well in Brody and Stubbs. I think Stubbs 16 and 20 this season. That's a very, very good return. So they are going to be a threat to this Swindon team. And I think the Swindon players are well aware of that. They know, Ray, that it's not going to be a cakewalk at all here. Thanks, guys. Between now and kickoff, we'll hear from both managers and meet their teams. In the last round, both were comfortable winners. Crawley, Swindon 4-0 winners at Plymouth. They reached the third round three times in the last four seasons. Crawley went one better, they won 5-0 at Garsley. And in a few minutes' time, we'll learn more about this small Sussex club. They have big plans for the future and tonight. We believe if we can play well tonight, it's a game on and you guys are here because there could be a cup upset. If we play well, there'll be a cup upset, that's for sure. have been answering questions and despite a hiccup against him still find themselves on course for the title. A trip to Tanadice will be a tricky test for the champions. Dundee United Rangers, Sunday 11.15 on ESPN. Carling, sponsor of the Clydesdale Bank Premier League on ESPN. And some call it coma toasted. Snatch your juice out, you like my words as I smoke it. Get it, get it, won't stop. Go cop, go get it. Better ask about it. We can scrap, we can rap, we can blast about it. Either way it go, I'm still gonna get my cash without it. So don't stop, get it, get it, won't stop. Go cop, go get it. Better ask about it. We can rap, we can scrap, we can blast about it. Either way it go, I'm still gonna get my cash without it. So don't stop, get it, get it, won't stop. Go cop, go get it. Better ask about it. You'll be blown away by the BT Autumn Deals. Get BT Total Broadband. And unlimited UK evening and weekend calls. For only £13.99 a month. Now absolutely free for the first three months. Call 0800 002 002 or visit bt.com slash autumn deals now. Because we all love a bit of comfort food, don't we? Like this cottage pastry pie with 100% British beef, with some lovely greens, some warming red, and the best bit? It only costs £10. Actually, make that the second best bit. Dine in for two for £10 at your M&S. At Santander, we understand you're never going to move your current account without good reason. Which is why when you switch to us, we'll give you £100, as well as an impressive 5% interest on your balance for 12 months. And with a dedicated switching service and 300 additional Santander branches, it's now even easier to switch to us. Together, we are Santander. Need a hand, Gromit? 
These pies are going to fly off the shelf, lad. Goal! Ooh, I've smashed it, Gromit. Do something. Hosting the World Cup in 2018 would be fantastic for everyone, especially Britain's small businesses. Gromit? Who ate all the pies? That's why Empower are backing the bed. To keep his best wines from disappearing, Don Melchor de Conchitoro spread the word that the devil lived in his cellar. Casillero del Diablo, wine legend. It's a little bit funny, this feeling inside. I'm not one of those who can easily hide. I hope you don't mind, I hope you don't mind that I put down Now you're in the world. We all live for the weekends, don't we? Whether they're long ones. <laughs> Quiet ones. Or oh, big ones! However good your weekend, make it better. With a 24-hour reception, hundreds of city locations, and king-size beds without the king-size prices. From just £29, make your weekend a premier weekend. Premier in. Everything's premier, but the price. A hat trick of rugby union matches are lined up for tomorrow here on ESPN. First up, Italy play Fiji in the current series of Autumn Internationals. Then at 4.45, it's an Aviva Premiership match between Bath and London Wasps, followed by no less than France against Australia. Three cracking matches live here on ESPN. In the FA Cup, sponsored by E.ON, fans of Crawley Town and their opponent, Swindon Town, are well aware that a victory tonight opens up the possibility of the arrival of the likes of cup holders Chelsea or Manchester United or a trip to Stamford Bridge or Old Trafford. Sub-zero temperatures aren't going to get in the way of them doing their level best to inspire their team. Crawley's Red Devils currently sit second in the Blue Square Bet Premier League, just a point behind AFC Wimbledon, but with a game in hand. For Crawley, well, a win tonight would be another big step in their master plan, as Daryl Curry will now explain. This is a place untouched by football's hierarchy. Crawley Town have never graced the Football League, but that might just be about to change. We're trying to do something a little bit special. This football club would, would like to be in League One. I think this is a lot more to come. The club with a chequered financial history is finally on a firm corporate footing. Money has brought security and players who can get Crawley back into the limelight. Bruce Winfield uh, invested a huge sum of money and over a period of time him and another lady in the town, Susan Carter, her family and, and Bruce went about clearing the club's debts which were way into seven figures and they've done that, now we're debt free. Defenders, can you any people and that's it, it's defending. Back in the summer when Bruce sat down with myself and told me what the budget was, he, he came up with an idea or a strategy that could we take a certain amount of that budget and because the money was in the bank, could we take some of that money and, and use it? to purchase players that, that we would like that wouldn't be available in an open market for nothing. Before they'd never spent more than a, about uh, four or five thousand pounds for a player and, and majority of players they hadn't spent anything on at all uh, and then suddenly we hear um, oh they're putting in a bid for uh, 70,000 pounds for to buy Matt Tubbs who uh, was the top scorer in the conference last year. We don't have the same wage bills as three or four clubs in this league but we've been able to go out and, and sign the players for, for decent transfer fees that probably is the envy of, of league, most clubs in League 2 and 1. We don't pay big wages, not, not in comparison to some other clubs in this league, um, but what we do do, we, we, we give them an environment that makes them feel happy and want to be here. This is uh, Richard Brody, our record signing. People in this league probably think it's come for the money, but it's nothing to do with that whatsoever. Um, I've come to, to an ambitious club who are well prepared and well organised and, and set up to, to go better places. Um, ambitious to get in the Football League and that's what I want to be. It's a far cry from the rigours of recent times. Twice in the last five years, this club have come dangerously close to extinction. And that makes their recent rise all the more improbable. The club has twice been in administration. 
Uh, it's had different changes of owners uh, and only about uh, three or four years ago uh, they came actually within one hour of being uh, liquidated totally. But now they're looking ahead to a brighter future. There's money in the bank, no lingering debts, thoughts of the old Sussex floodlight cup well in the past. They believe this is their time. The FA Cup uh, is, is the competition that really puts the spotlight on, on clubs and gets people really excited in the community. Um, it's going to be a tremendous crowd um, for this match against Swindon. We believe if we, if we can play well tonight, it's a game on and you guys are here because there could be a cup upset. If we play well, there'll be a cup upset, that's for sure. Crawley are at the peak of their all-time powers, sitting near the top of the football conference. They have never been at such lofty heights. I think that we've got a very good chance of going up. Um, we'd love to, and we think that we can, but there's still a long way to go. There's a lot of hard work to be done to deliver that dream for this town, and this town deserves it. It absolutely deserves a football league play. We've got bags of experience, FA Cup experience, pitch side here at Crawley Town. Lou McCorry's alongside John Barnes. Interesting because th they're running this club like it's a League One club already. That's the standards they're going for. Well, that's what they're preparing for, and no more. And, and they've shown their intent in signing the joint top scorers, Tubbs and Brody last year, 26 goals each. Spent quite a lot of money. The reports of £275,000 from York, which they've denied, and maybe £70,000 for Tubbs. So, you know, they, they have ambition and they recognise that. They need to score goals, so that's why they've gone about it that way. You know, for the Crawley fans, well, that just shows they mean business. You just go out and buy the dynamic duo, and that shows we absolutely want the goals that's going to take us into the Football League. Well, that does help, Ray. You've got two goal scorers that can score like uh, the two that Crawley have got. It takes you a long way, but I think what shouldn't be overlooked is they are the meanest defence in the Blue Square Premier League at this moment in time. They've only conceded 16 goals, and sometimes when you've got a couple of strikers, they take all the plaudits and everyone else is forgotten, but defensively they're sound, which will make it difficult for Swindon tonight as well. You, you know what? The spirit in this team, I'm starting to sense just that they mean business. They're not, haven't got, they've got serious heads on about winning the game, but look, they're, look, they're smiling faces, look at Brody. Well, they're confident, you know. He, he scored a couple of goals um, on, the, on, on the weekend. Uh, Tubbs got a hat trick. Um, so, you know, they're, they're, they're playing, they're, they're full of confidence. And you saw even in the, um, in the interview before, why they say they've come here for the right reasons to go to the Premier League, sorry, to go into the league, into league football, I think that financially they're doing okay as well. What's this remind you of, guys? <laughs> Good luck. Bad defending. <laughs> Give credit to Brady. Look at that. How far is he going to go? He's is, going all the way, Ray. Is this Ricky Vera or is this Marikin Arbanz? <laughs> Well, it's a bit, it's a, it was a bit warm in the Maracan. It's probably a bit warm when Wendell and Ricky Villa did it. But you know, he's playing. Full, he's, he's full of confidence. They're full of confidence. They're relaxed. They're enjoying it. And, and we've seen it every. Most Fridays we've been to, to, to grounds like this, we've seen it. I think when you're talking about confidence, Ray, and team spirit, if you know the manager, that stems from Steve. Yes. Yeah. He, he is a confident fella. He's a good manager. Did exceptionally well with Boston. Yeah. And he'll have this team revved up tonight to give Swindon a. Well, a real game, there's no doubt about that. He's a tough cookie, and if someone isn't doing it, he can bring other people on. And alongside Brody, he's got Tubbs, yeah. and uh, he can score, and he's a top player. They can, but of course, you know, they are, they are you know, stepping up, because Swindon, and while I believe that their position, it, they, I think they're in a the fourth position in the league, because they've got good players. We talk about Pruton, you've got Pericard, Austin up front, he's got 11 in, in, 11 in, uh, in 17. Swindon are a decent side. When you say they're stepping up, John, I think 10 out of the starting 11 tonight, have all played in the league, mm. the Crawley team. So there's no inexperience yeah. there. And when was the last time we covered a non-league team versus a league team with so much experience? Yeah. Yeah. If you add up the league appearances, football league appearances yeah. in this Crawley team, I wonder if it'll be it'll be quite a high number. Now, but the other side of the coin as well is that Swindon have Charlie Austin. Yeah. Uh, and, and he's a player that I think Crawley tried to sign because they're so ambitious. A lot of clubs tried to sign him. Yes, and, and in a struggling Swindon side, he's got 11 and 17. You know, he's, he's got lots of quality. Um, Pericard up front as well, you know, and, and, and Pruton. I mean, they're, they're a good side. John Paul McGovern, who I remember as a young lad at, at, at Celtic. Uh, and, he's, and he's got Premier League experience. So this Swindon side, you know, they, they're not going to be any pushover. But as you rightly say, Crawley are full of confidence. Full town to Swindon, big jump. He's managed to cope with that, Ray. I think his next step, unfortunately for Swindon, will be away from Swindon town into the league. No doubt about it, he's a goal scorer. Uh, guys, thank you very much. Right, let's get a view from the central characters. Pitch side ready to go. And first of all, I think Daryl's with Mark Steen, the Crawley physio. Ray, many thanks, that's right, and Mark knows all about the FA Cup. 1994 FA Cup final for Chelsea, along with one Craig Burley. Tell me your memories of that year. Yeah, I mean, it's the 
best day of my life uh, playing in the FA Cup final. You know, you dream of it as a kid. And like, you know, I was fortunate enough to play um, in the 99 for well, uh, um, FA Cup final. And um, I'll, I'll always remember that day. Didn't end well. I know you lost 4-0, but here you are now as the physio. So how did that come about? Um, yeah, like I went to university um, and, and studied for three years to get my degree. And, um, you know, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. The gaffer era has been unbelievable. You know, like I've, I've, I've arrived at um, Crawley in the last eight, ten weeks. And um, it's been thoroughly professional, like the way that they've conducted it the, um, throughout the club. The so way someone said they're being run like a League One club. Is that true? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and, and, and that's, you know, like... Um, superb the fact that you know like the gaffer and like the whole of the club you know like from top to bottom has been run like you know so professionally that you know that's what why i decided to come here mark great to speak to you i'll say thank you for now because i'm just going to wander across i actually see steve has just popped out to watch the warm-up steve great to see you how are you feeling ahead of this one yeah it's excitement isn't it it's the fa cup and um you know we've we're facing a, a real top top class league one side in swindon and um and a very experienced manager who he'll know how to come here and get a result so it's so it's a, it's a top game for us. You've gone with two strikers. You want to finish this one one way or the other tonight, don't you? Yeah, we don't want to go to Swindon in the replay. You know, we, uh, we want to deal with this. But, you know, first and foremost, we don't want to lose either. We want to be in Sunday's draw. But, you know, people will see what the changes if we have to make changes later on to, to try and affect the game positively. And, and we'll do that and we won't be frightened to do that. You score a lot of goals, seven at the weekend. Tubbs and Brody, two expensive signings for this club up front. Are they the key to the match? I personally think the key is Mills and McFadgen at the back. You know, I think you've got Pericard who's a championship striker and young Austin who'll play in the championship. It's possibly only a question of when. So I think for us, it's about our, our defenders being decent because if we get the ball in good areas and, and we make half chances, Tubbs and Brody will score goals. I've got no doubts about that. I looked down the list of you players. And many of them have a lot of FA Cup experience. Are you really the underdogs here? Oh, we're by far the underdogs. You know, Twindon Town are, are capable of coming here and turning us over three or four. Um, if we score first, we're likely to do that to them. We, we've got every confidence, but, you know, if you don't buy a ticket, you don't win a prize. And if, if you don't feel confident at home in front of a passionate crowd against a side that, although they're decent, we'd like to think that we'd be capable of playing a League Two every week. So the, the golf is not as big as what maybe some viewers think at home. I'll talk to you during the game. The best of luck. Pleasure. We're going to need it. Thank you. Uh, he's been round the block a few times. He knows his way around boardrooms, training grounds, dugouts, whatever. How important is a strong personality to really harness a non-league club like Crawley Town? I think it's most important, Ray. He'll be telling those players in that dressing room probably right now that they can win this tie. They'll believe in him. Why shouldn't they? They're second top of the league, looking in, in with a great chance of getting promoted into the Football League. He's had the courage to go and buy some players, and all right, you can... Give people the money. If you make a mistake or two with that money, you've made, you know, bad buys. But he's made some good buys, and they can get promotion and they can win tonight. He's, he's got to stamp his personality on the club, the league, and he's done that. You can sense it. He has, and they're a hard-working team. And you know, the, the, I don't know whether the fact he's Scottish, Lou will know better than I. But there are lots of good Scottish managers around, and Scottish managers have strong personalities and <laughs> take no nonsense. <laughs> Most of them, anyway. But it, the, the, what he said tonight was right. As much as we talk about Brody and Todd, they'll have to defend well. Yeah. You know, because, and, and we've seen it in FA Cup nights before, once the, 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 the minnows or the underdogs defend when it's top team scoring, they always have a chance. Uh, not long to kick off, but time enough that we can hear from Danny Wilson and meet his team. Although some, you know, some quite can't remember who they play for. Swindon Town FC. EFC. What? EFC. 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 Swindon Town. Swindon Town. Oh my God. Swindon Town. What's the deal? The original Monday Night Football, live on ESPN. In week 12, Frank Gore leads the San Francisco 49ers into the desert to take on Larry Fitzgerald and the Arizona Cardinals. Coverage starts at midnight with Monday NFL Countdown. 49ers Cardinals, live this Monday on ESPN. 
At Every Curry's and PC World, get six months interest-free credit on all laptops, desktops and tablets, including Apple. Plus, trade in your old laptop and get £70 off any new laptop or desktop. There's already £140 off this HP laptop powered by AMD. 2 gig memory, only 299 or 229 with a trade-in. Save £110 on this Acer netbook with up to seven and a half hours battery life and Windows 7, just 229 Now at Curry's and PC World. Snowflake in my pocket, let's take a sleigh ride on the ice. Northern lights are glowing and reflecting in your eyes. I know you are. How will I recognize you? Oh, don't you worry about that. You'll know when I'm there. Dior Um. A circle and a spiral, a wheel within a wheel. Never ending or beginning on an ever spinning reel as the images unwind like the circles that you find in the windmills of your mind. <laughs> this season, all this and more is available on BT Vision. TV from BT. Hello, George. Where am I? Make an educated guess. It's not my time. Maybe we could make an arrangement. Espresso. What else? Instant hydration with the new Wilkinson Sword Hydro. Water activated gel hydrates your skin as you shave, and five blades with skin guards help reduce irritation. Our best shave for your skin. New Hydro from Wilkinson Sword. Free your skin. Ai, 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 ai. É o canto do pregoneiro que com sua harmonia traz alegria em salsa América, não é? Ai, 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 ai. If you move to another country, HSBC Premier could help set up your accounts before you get there, allowing you to access your money as soon as you arrive. <laughs> Live life without boundaries. HSBC Premier from the world's local bank. FA Cup, second round. Crawley Child, Swindon Town. The Red Devils. Come on, the Robins. Lee Square, Bet Premier Division, Empower League One. Home. 1896. 1879. Honours. Four times Sussex Senior Cup winners. 1969 League Cup winners. In the first round, we hammered Geisley 5 0. We're not four past Plymouth. FA Cup third round, 1992. FA Cup semi finalists, 1910, 1912. Wants to watch TNT, Tubzand, Torres, Charlie Austin, Sergio, No Fernando. Tomorrow's headline Robins cruising to the third round. The Red Devils send Swindon to hell. 107 miles between Crawley and Swindon, and the temperature is dropping like a stone. We think it's just above zero. One at the moment. I think it's going to go lower than that. But faithful Swindon fans have made the trip. Uh, jumping him down and shouting is going to be a good idea.
to try and keep warm in the second round of the FA Cup sponsored by Aon. The Crawley Swindon match is live here on ESPN. Um, we've moved into the gym just to get a little bit of the match atmosphere before we go. It's cold outside, nice and here. See, you were talking before about the fact that Crawley Town have big plans. They've got a great gym, their facilities behind here are terrific. Yeah, but I mean, if you look and see the little um, sayings and uh, it's all about embracing the psychological aspe aspects of, of, of success. Not the physical aspects, the psychological aspects. If you look at things like team, together everyone achieves more, the attitude, consistency, 100%. And that is what, if you go to Liverpool, you go to all these clubs, these are the same things that they have, you know, talking about the psychological aspects of success. And um, Crawley are doing it the right way. Yeah. The nearer we get to kick off, you, you can just see how much it matters to Crawley, but, and Swindon too. A tough game for Swindon, Ray, there's no doubt about it, but Steve will have his lads wound up for this game. I mean, you see the preparation around the gym here with, the, as John said, the different sayings. Steve's been around the game, he, he visits clubs, he works hard at his game. In my time in management, he was the one manager I used to see everywhere. Whatever I turned up, he happened to be there. I was starting to think he was following me around. So you've got a hard-working manager, and he demands that from his players. And no matter what happens tonight, I expect to see a Crawley Town team working their socks off right from the start, right to the very end, and putting pressure on Swindon. Barnes, you can't go on the bike at the moment. We've got work to do. You can't do anything on the bike at the moment. Coming out from the <laughs> Let's meet the teams, uh, Swindon, in a few minutes' time. But first, there's a proper introduction to Crawley. My name's Pablo Mills, uh, captain of Crawley Town, and this is our team. This is our supposed to be keeper. Couldn't catch a call, to be fair. Uh, one of the old lads in the group as well. Good lad, really. <laughs> this is Wills. Been here for about 20 years. Uh, knows everything about the club. Let's do a testimony soon as well. Uh, this is Kyle. AKA, no. <laughs> you see, he's got Keep a big hooter. Keep my Dino. <laughs> <laughs> Into his herbs and all that. He's a bit of a weirdo, to be fair. <laughs> Ball man. Uh, got him in the home. <laughs> Don't want to get that. A bit serious. Uh, good banner though. Good lad. Uh, this is uh, Scott Nielsen, uh, little leprechaun, Essex boy and that. Stevie, a bit emotional, uh, sensitive and that, but uh, good lad, good army. This is Serge, um, crazy hairdo. Uh, thinks he's a bit of an Argentinian player, but he's never been Argentinian really, like, but uh, he's a good lad as well. This is uh, Richard Brody, our record signing. Ugliest <laughs> man in football, to be fair. Good lad though. Uh, this is Tubbsy, uh, I think he's a bit of a ladies man, uh, does alright to be fair to him, next to you, uh, yeah, good lad. Pablo Mills, club captain, sick of him going on about playing the championship and <laughs> full back in at Rotherham. I've told him we're all in the conference for a reason. Me and Wills walking through town last week, see him getting his teeth whitened. <laughs> <laughs> good lad though. <laughs> This is behind the scenes, Swindon Town Football Club. Let me show you around. We've got the boot room in here, all the boys getting the boots ready for the game. Thomas to Seve's jacket. Get the worst fashion sense I've ever seen. There's all the young boys here. Don't know all their names. I don't, I don't talk to them. Matty Ritchie. Introduce yourself. Say Matty Ritchie. This is Scotty. This is Bolly. On one to Man City. Striker. <laughs> Coming into the changing room just now. Come and meet some of the boys. This is Dave Lucas, our goalkeeper. Came in from training one day and we don't, still don't know who the culprit is, but they've put up lookalikes all around the, the changing room. As you can see, Al O'Brien looks like Shirley from East Enders. Lexi, John Francois, he obviously looks like Eddie Muffet. My boy, he's all my own work as well. I don't have a clue who that guy is, but it <laughs> looks a double of Nathan Thompson. John Travolta, who Tim's is buzzing off her. Just skip, skip this one. Don't look in like me. Um, this, this is Prox, but this is the guy Frank from Shameless. <laughs> and we've got Avatar, looks like Sean Morrison, as you can see the resemblance. Gerard Butler should be up there, lad. And we've got Charlie Austin, who's a ringer of Sophie Webster from Corey. <laughs> where every player doesn't want to be in the treatment room. 
Michael, Michael Timlin. Does he need a bit of treatment? He's enjoying himself, isn't he? Good to see Swindon are really entering the spirit of this. Yeah, and of course, you know, um, as much as it's, it's an FA Cup night and it's, and it's serious, it's good to see that they're relaxed as well. He could be on Strictly Come Down. You've done that before, Barnes. Yeah, well, he's got to keep his head up. Um, the feet aren't moving in coordination. I mean, I'm an expert <laughs> now. I've been on Strictly Come Down. He's got no chance. But, uh, where do you stand on having that spirit? You, you've got to feel good to be able to play well, haven't you? There's no good being sort of really down and tight. Well, I've known players to get injured doing less than that, Ray, before a game. But uh, no, he's up for it. He's looking forward to it. And... Uh, Let's see what the 90 minutes bring. Yeah. Swindon, they need to really play to their potential, the playoff final last season. Well, I don't think they've played to the potential this season. By all accounts, Notts County during the week weren't very good. Um, defensively, were a little bit poor, a little bit suspect at the back. Danny will be looking for a better performance than that. If they play at their very best, and in the last round, they went to Plymouth, which is tough going to Plymouth and won 4-0. So he'll be saying to the players, if you can go and win 4-0 at Plymouth, you can win here tonight. But I don't think it'll be easy. Is it a no-win situation for them in a way? Because uh, they're expected to win, but then they could be on the end of a shock. Um, I don't think it'll be that much of a shock. And I think that of all the games we've seen, this is uh, we have seen some shocks. But I think that a lot of people may expect Crawley to win because of what they're doing, the way that Swindon are playing. So I think Swindon can come to this game quite relaxed, knowing that there are a few people who would expect them to get beaten. So, you know, if they play to their potential because of the quality of players they have, they should win. But... We have to wait and see. OK, that's when the manager, Danny Wilson, here he is talking to Daryl. Many thanks, Ray, and Danny knows all about the FA Cup. In fact, as a manager, he took Barnsley all the way to the quarterfinals back in 97, beating Manchester United along the way. This is a very different test tonight, though, isn't it, Danny? What do you expect from Crawley? Well, it's quite the opposite, isn't it? You know, it's being favourites and um, the underdogs being, being Crawley, but being drawn at home. Um, it's got a classic in, uh, in store, isn't it? You know, it's, uh, it's um, obviously the giant killing. That's why the TV's here and, and represented. Um, but, but overall, you know, we've, um, we've been in this position before. We know what we have to, um, to maintain. We know it's going to be a very tough task for us. There's no doubt about it. You know, Crawley going very well in their own division, and irrespective, you know, whichever position they are in uh, in football leagues, you know, when you get momentum, you know, it's uh, it's good from their point of view. So it'll be a it'll be tough for us. Are you surprised they're playing two strikers tonight? And I believe that they don't want a replay. They want it to finish tonight some way anyway. Um, I'm not surprised, really, no, because I think you know the um, the, adva the advantage for them is, is this evening, obviously at home and uh, obviously the pitch and the conditions. You know, they, it's in their favour at the moment, so uh, it didn't surprise me whatsoever. But um, but we're well aware of, of what's in front of us, you know, and uh, and yes, and I'd like it to be finished tonight as well, but in our favour, obviously. And you're without your captain as well tonight, an experienced man. How much of a blow is that? Um, it's a major blow when you lose your big players. We've, we've had the same problem most of the season, really. You know, we've had uh, some of our name players have, have not been available to us, but at, uh, but we get on with it. You know, we've got some good players in in, in place of him, so let's hope we can uh, we can get a good result. Danny, the very best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Right. Danny Wilson showing his support for Movember. Okay, you've seen the teams, assessed the situation. We know how important this is. Which way is this going to go? Well, FA Cup, Ray, a little bit of luck on the night, you can get through. A little bit of bad luck, you can be knocked out. I think this is an even game, but I'm just going to go with uh, a draw. I think it's going to go to a replay. Barnes, what do you think? Well, um, under different circumstances, I'll go with Swindon, but, but because of the quality that they actually have, but they're not playing with that much confidence, and Crawley are flying at the moment. But I just feel tonight that, that Swindon will step up to the plate. I'll go for a Swindon win. What about the momentum that Crawley have in terms of what they want to do at the club and the goals of late and the spirit of everything to do surrounding this club? Well, I think the first goal is important, Ray. If Crawley get the first goal, it'll give them a great belief that they can win this tie. I do feel that if Swindon get the first goal, then it's going to be maybe a bit difficult for them to get back in the game, but I've just got a sneaky feeling it's going to be on a shared this evening. I think that they have bigger ambitions. I mean, of course, the third round is fantastic. You can get Manchester United, you can get anyone, but you look at the ambition of this club and they want to be in the Football League. So, yes, this is very important, but they've got bigger fish to fry, I think. Yeah. Uh, ball boys are getting ready to go. and Enjoy yourself, guys. Hope you have a really nice evening. Looking forward to it? Yeah, yeah, I think that was a yes. Match officials will be out any minute and so will the teams. Uh, uh, we're ready, steady, all revved up to go. Here we are in the FA Cup, sponsored by Aon. It's Crawley Town versus Swindon Town. All the best to both teams and to guide us through the match. Craig Burley and Derek Ray. Thank you very much, Ray. Well, on the early rounds of the FA Cup, it's all about making headlines, isn't it? Crawley Town tonight hope to find themselves on the back pages come tomorrow morning. For Swindon, it's all about making this a non-story. Freezing conditions here, as we've discussed. A cold November night in Crawley would have many an Argentinian hankering after the summer that's just arrived there. But not Sergio Torres, whose dream was always to play in England. He has found a home at the Broadfield. Torres will be asked to provide attacking thrust from a wide position in midfield. 
while Richard Brody and Matthew Tubbs supply the goals. Tubbs has 16 to his name this season. Danny Bowman reached the last four of the FA Cup with Wickham Wanderers in 2001, Craig. Well, it's a, it's a crawler team that's got plenty of football league experience. Uh, Pablo Mills was at Derby and he's played in the top flight with me many moons ago. In front, Bowman and Masterton. Bowman got promoted with Oxford. Masterton knocked Celtic out when he was at Clyde, so he knows a bit about Jack and Keller. You mentioned Torres, but for me, what a crawler are about are the two front guys, Brody and Tubbs. Loads of goals between them. Steve Evans will be looking for the servers up to them quickly. It is a homecoming of sorts for Swindon Town goalkeeper Phil Smith. He spent two years with Crawley between 2004 and 2006. Tonight, he makes his 100th appearance for the Robins. Vincent Pericard returns to boost the Swindon attack, and the Frenchman will partner the exciting 21-year-old Charlie Austin. Captain Jonathan Douglas is out with a groin injury. John Paul McGovern and Michael Timlin were in the Swindon side, knocked out of the cup by Histon in the first round two years ago. Again, I think you're always walking on eggshells when you're the side that, that should really win, win the game, and that's what Swindon are. Plenty of experience, probably struggling for a little bit of form at the moment, losing too many goals for Danny Wilson's likely. But when you've got somebody up front like Austin and Pericard, who's playing at Juventus, then you've always got a chance tonight. The FA Cup builds connections between football clubs. This is the first official meeting of Crawley and Swindon, although their paths did cross in a summer friendly in 2005. Swindon prevailing by four goals to three. And although it's a tale of non-league against the Football League, Crawley are certainly not your team of local butchers and bakers. The squad expensively assembled, not just by Blue Square Bet Premier standards either. The resources and training facilities would be the envy of many in Leagues 1 and 2. Swindon currently 20th. In League 1 will likely have to dig deep if they're to reach the third round. They've managed just one away win in the league, but the Robins have twice been successful on their travels in cup competitions this season. I know it's cold, Derek, but uh, I think these lads want to just get out and get on with it, sort of filtering out. No rush at the moment, but I think both will just want to get out there, get the game started, it's cold, get, get moving. Um, Crawley want to get a bit of pressure on. I'll really ask a few questions of the Football League side Swindon, who should be favourites to win it. Two English towns separated by 107 miles. Crawley and Swindon join together tonight on ESPN in the oldest cup competition of them all. Hello, George. Where am I? Make an educated guess. It's not my time. Maybe we could make an arrangement. An espresso. What else? With over 270 ways to bet on football, I will bet on the first goal scorer. On the number of cards. On corners. And I will back him to get a hat trick. And because everything can change in a second, I will bet him play during the game. Join today and have a £10 bet on football and we'll give you a £20 bet free. Go to williamhill.com forward slash football and use code FREE20.
experience all that Scotland has to offer. To plan your winter break, go to visitscotland.com slash white. Ai, 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 é o canto do pregoneiro que com sua harmonia traz alegria em salsa América, não é? Ai, ai, ai. If you move to another country, HSBC Premier could help set up your accounts before you get there, allowing you to access your money as soon as you arrive. <laughs> Live life without boundaries. HSBC Premier from the world's local bank. OK, bit of festive fun. See how many Santas you can spot while we tell you about the great football this December on ESPN. Catch the Barclays Premier League. Whitesdale Bank Premier League, FA Cup second round replays, eight games from the UEFA Europa League, European football, Del Piero, and the FIFA Club World Cup. See how you did at espn.co.uk slash Santas. One thing you can't fail to miss is ESPN this December. Welcome back to the Broadfield here in Crawley. The covers were on the pitch until well into the afternoon. The temperature has plummeted, but the FA Cup over the years has been so much about non-league teams and their red-hot moments. Richard Brody will lead the line for Crawley Town, the 23-year-old, the record signing joined from York City during the summer. And playing alongside him is Matt Tubbs. He's 26, and he's a very effective partner. Grand total of 15 goals in the Blue Square Bet Premier this season. Vincent Pericard is back for Swindon. There's some doubt about his fitness, but he has made it. And the referee is Rob Shoebridge from Derbyshire. Everyone doing their best to warm themselves up here. The great thing about this competition is you never really know how the story will unfold. Crawley and Swindon are about to write the latest FA Cup chapter. Swindon Town in the change strips, attacking the goal to our left in the first half. Charlie Austin tried to put on a bit of pressure and it was... A fox job, really, you've got to say, by Michael Kaupers in goal for Crawley Town. He's fortunate that this wasn't fatal. Well, you can see the surface is skinny, but that, that's rolled back to him pretty nicely. It doesn't take a bobble now. Uh, does Marty Ritchie have to take a touch here? Maybe if he takes it first time, a little bit early in the game, difficult skill, but keeper was out of position as well. So he had more of the goal to chip it at once he takes the touch. As he did then, he just invited the challenge back on, but what a nervous start from the goalkeeper. He is 36, Michael Kaupers. Also the fourth round with Brighton last season. Forward by Glenn Wilson for Crawley. for Phil Smith, the former Crawley Town goalkeeper. Oh, such a big night in this part of the country. A very large crowd inside the broad field. They've been doing their best to get the gates up. As Grand Swindon well represented here as well. Journey of just over 100 miles. Sean Morrison winning that aerial battle. Morrison, the 19 year old centre half. Mills have got over there for 
Crawley. up there trying to ask one or two questions of Mills. You remember him from the old days, Craig, Pablo Mills? Yeah, I mean, he, he was at Derby when Derby won the Premier League and he was a youngster. Got a sniffy first-team action, but uh, sort of lost his way a little bit. During his career, ended up at Rotherham, I think. MK Dons as well for a bit, so... Had potential, but didn't quite fulfil it. Finds himself here at Crawley in non-league, hoping to become, obviously with the money they're spending, and the managers have got a league club, become a league club sooner rather than later. They've got 225 games for four different football league clubs. Pablo Mills. Heard of Crockett and Tubbs. Crawley, it's Brody and Tubbs. And supply their firepower. Difficult customer, Brody. And Morrison was draped all over him. Well, Morrison's only a youngster, you mentioned he's, he's only 19, so that, I mean, that pair up front will be a handful. I, I think for him, they had non league or lower division, certainly with Tubbs' as goals. And Brody will look to mess the centre halves up, certainly the younger of the two. His hand for the back fella back in. And Wilson, the 24-year-old defender, a versatile player, and there is a lot of flexibility within the Crawley team under Steve Evans. Moving on by Torres. Big boot from Paul Caddis, on loan from Celtic. He was on the bench for Scotland recently against the Faroe Islands. And the idea was good that time. Brody in full flight, couldn't quite reach it. Yeah, I just skipped away off this surface, timed his run very, very well on side. Just get it off, you can just see the top of the surface, a little bit of covering of frost on it. Which is relatively soft though underneath, so the bits are going in. Well, up for Charlie Austin, he's caught Mills. Both playing the same way, so it's a it's a straightforward battle. Just looking at them now. Both got both got two up front, two quite big pairings in Austin and Pericard and, and Brody and Tubbs and four across the middle. Cut the wide guys each, so uh, no fancy dance stuff, no intricate systems, just good old fashioned uh, 4 4 2 and then battle off to see who's the best. Well, Steve Evans. The man in charge of Crawley Town made a name for himself with Boston. He was there for seven years until the third round of the FA Cup in season 2004-2005. By Cowpers. Tubbs. Caddis. To get out of play. Right. 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 Again, trying to scrape it forward. The Scotsman, Scott Cuthbert, in the heart of the Swindon Town defence. Oh, that time by Bullman. Tony Bullman looking for Brody. Cuthbert. has been in charge of Swindon Town since Boxing Day 2008. Took Barnsley to the quarter-finals of the FA Cup way back in 1997. 
Zina Howell, the throw for Crawley. Turns 30 in three days' time, Howell. This is his 12th appearance of the season, they've all been starts. Throw a blanket and everybody over on that side at long. There's nobody on this right-hand side for Crawley whatsoever. They've given it away, it's all a bit too tight for them over there. And finally leaving it for Paul Caddis to take. Crutton. Oh, McFadgen is the defensive anchor for Crawley Town. Interested in the last game, a 7 0 win against Altrincham with a suspension looming. He's also carrying an ankle injury. Here goes Nielsen, he's a real flyer. That right hand side, there's plenty of pace. The boot of McFadgen. Nielsen's in there again. Michael Rose, the Swindon left back. Played by Stockport back in June. So that so far, that has been played essentially between the boxes. Bottoms pass, Torres is there to gobble it up. And Howell, it's a clever ball in. Timlin remains calm, Michael Timlin back there defending for Swindon. Austin, offside. Pericard. Well, the idea was right, and I suppose when Pericard pulls into this position, uh, he's really going to try and keep us alone. Now, the right back, uh, Wilson, was slightly deeper than McFadden in the centre half, but they just got away with that there, Crawley. Very high line. Pericard born in Cameroon, and a former French under 21 international. He scored three goals in his last five FA Cup matches. Gathering. 21 years of age, Charlie Austin was linked with a possible move to Millwall during the summer. Millwall, the team that beat Swindon in last season's playoff final. Can't really argue with eight goals from his last ten matches. for company. At least there's no biting wind here in Sussex this evening. It is bitterly cold. We don't have that additional wind factor. We reckon it's colder than one degree Celsius, perhaps it's frozen up. Must be close to below freezing now. It's like a summer's day in Scotland. This. Yes, it is. We did have the sheets on the pitch before the game, so there was a... There was a slight concern, Derek, wasn't there, I think, but they've done a good job, and I don't think it was ever really in, in any doubt, but they, they didn't take any chances, Crawley. That was from Steve Masterson. Of Crawley, Scottish contingent. Nielsen. Rose had the measure of the situation.
Wilson for Crawley Town. Forward by Rose for Swindon. Over the head of Perry Carr. It's been attended to by McFadgen. Here's Nielsen. Morrison's measured ball. Charlie Austin. Leading by Rose. Too close to Cavers. Here's Torres. Now Howell. Here's her pace. It's Torres. And we found Howell again. Went up, apparently against Perry Carr. Lee Betts, the far side assistant referee. And have the flag in the air. Protten for Swindon. That Ritchie was the outlet to Protten's left. A couple of goals in 11 matches this season. That Ritchie. A loan from Portsmouth it was initially a one-month loan. It's been extended. Richie back to Rose. And the ball was out. Yeah, I think coming up in 15 minutes, both sides huffing and puffing a little bit. Uh, loads of play in the middle club, really, in the middle half of the pitch, and nobody really showing any cutting edge up to now. The boxing match is going to let spar for a bit just to size each other up. Crawley have yet to concede a goal in the FA Cup this season. And the shot comes in here from Austin. Packed with power. They're very far away. Well, that's a poor clearance from Pablo Mills here, just out to the edge of the box. Now, I thought for all the money in the world, he's going to go for the bend that the Cowper's his left, but he just sort of pulls the trigger back with no back lift whatsoever, goes for the strike with the laces, very good strike, I've got to say, and he is a threat, and if you're going to drop little balls out to the edge of the box and he picks it up with his goal-scoring record, not just this season, but in seasons gone before, then you're asking for trouble. Former well, bricklayer, Charlie Austin, briefly, when he was playing his football for Pool Town. Richie, last of all. And a warning shot from Austin. Fired across. All these bows. Torres brings composure to Crawley. Mills. No realistic chance for Tubbs to get on the end of it. Phil Smith, the goalkeeper for Swindon, bringing up the century mark in terms of appearances for the Robins. Lost his place to David Lucas for a spell last season. And Richie was given to him by Austin. And Mills getting in the way. Petter was arriving. And that was spotted by referee Rob Shoebridge. It was good play actually down the left from Swindon before Prop gave away the, the free kick on the edge of the box. It was good awareness from Charlie Austin to set uh, set him away down that way. Doesn't mind getting his foot in, does he, David Prop? The red cards, so referred to there, coming against MK Dons and Plymouth. 
Capers. Sometimes that is his preferred way of playing. There's nowhere to go. But I just always think with goalkeepers, I think somebody drops them a few mad tablets just before they go out in the field. Somebody must tell them, do an impression of Franz Beckenbauer, because why they don't just launch it? And even when he got under pressure there, Derek, he still thought he was going to take another few touches. Just, they are a, a, a breathing to themselves, aren't they? And Pericard tries to nod it on into the clutches of Cavers. And Crawley might have something on here. Torres. And try to get around Paul Caddis to no avail. Cavers, he's made a mess of that one. Well, I think every time it goes back to his feet, if I was Pericard and, and, and Charlie Austin, I think I'd be. Yeah. There you go. I don't think he'll have forgot about that by the time he gets to half time either. And Steve Evans delivers a message. You don't forget it in a hurry. Torres. Caris sticking to his task. Austin's header. Mills over the top. And outside the decision against Brody. He didn't think much of it. Well, he, he'd been in a couple of times. I mean, once he was offside, once he wasn't, and the ball just uh, skipped across. It's tight, but he is just... I mean, it's a decent line, I've got to say, from Swindon. Uh, very, very square. Nobody really much deeper than anybody else, so... Uh, it's, a, it's a good line, in all fairness to him. It's up to the striker to bend the run properly. Fine showing so far by the Crawley Town outfield players. Two or three noticeable only wobbles from Michael Cowper as the goalkeeper. He's come for this one. He's been okay with his hands, it must be said. <laughs> Tight, intimate little ground, this. We're Broadfield Stadium. It was an important intervention by Cuthbert for Swindon. Player who began his career at Celtic, never made a senior appearance for the club. Strong Scottish influence at Swindon Town. Of course, in recent times they've had Scottish managers, Morris Malpaz, before that, Paul Sturrock. There's Pericard. Austin. It's thundered high into the air by Mills. Wasn't too fussy about where the ball went. And the new ball was required. Looking again for Timlin. Timlin's low shot. That certainly wasn't going to trouble Cadvers. I just think he's about picking the right option at the moment for, for both teams. I certainly don't think that was for Timlin or for Danny Wilson there. But he looks nice and composed and calm. Danny Wilson doing his bit for Movember. A campaign to raise cancer awareness.
plenty of aerial jousts out there. Torres there together with Proton. Torres has been penalised. Swindon haven't been in the best of form, just two wins from the last nine matches in all competitions. Smith, the goalkeeper. Pericard couldn't beat McFadgen in the air. Here's Pericard again. Rose. Richie. Back to Cuthbert. He's failed to find Pericard. Oh, made his way to the left. Flick. Tomlin succeeded that time in finding Austin. Here's Rose for Swindon. There was a brief coming together. Rose and Nielsen. Don't forget, we've got action from the Clydesdale Bank Premier League on Sunday here on ESPN. We'll be at Tannadice for Dundee United against Rangers and there will be a referee in place. Then on Monday, we're back in the FA Cup, sponsored by E.ON, with Troilsden against Leighton Orient. We'll take you to Greater Manchester, Monday from 7. That's here on ESPN and at HD. Monday will be Troilsden's day to try to... Pull off the surprise. Tonight it's the turn of Crawley Town. And so they cannot fault Crawley's organisation, Craig, based on what we've seen in the opening 25 minutes. No, I mean, absolutely. I mean, they've spent uh, quite a bit of money in the league. Steve Evans, he's, he's a little carry. He was saying he works hard, he goes around, he looks at players, he does his homework, and very much in the title run in their division and there's not a there's dirty places between the, the sides in terms of where they are in their, in their own leagues but you know, Swindon have lost a lot of goals of late they haven't been defending particularly well and that's why they lie I think 20th in their division so uh, yeah it's pretty much even Stevens Button was trying to force his way through for Swindon and it's Richie come back off the post again well fortune favoured Cowpers it didn't favour Richie well it comes it's a great strike from Richie here skids off the surface it comes off the post comes off Cowper's head just here back off the post for a second time now that's luck for you can do nothing about it great strike off his shoulder but looks at the skims off his head back onto the post somehow stays out and even he doesn't know it Richie couldn't believe it. I'm sure Danny Wilson felt that was going in. Well, it had to be a corner, didn't it, as well? Nobody else there was, there was only the post and the keeper. It's the corner not given to Swindon, it ought to have gone their way. in this drama so far has without question been Miguel Cowpers <laughs> Crawley Town goalkeeper clearance oh. was by Caddis Swindon might be under a bit of pressure here Brody but Caddis atoning Brody. All the way up 
towards Austin. Let's quickly go to ESPN's Daryl Curry. Daryl. Steve, they've had a couple of warning shots, haven't they? Yeah, they have, well, but, you know, the, um, we've been sloppy. You know, we've got one or two, I think, are playing to the cameras as opposed to playing their normal game. And, um, and they're catchless because they've got the quality to do that. They're a bit fortunate with the ball off the post and I think everybody in the world thinks it's a corner. But, um, you know, we've not settled yet. We're not in the game. We're not playing yet. So if we stay at 0-0, we're, we're happy. And, you know, we're looking at 20 minutes going and quality is not playing. We're 0-0 with really League One. So um, if we're not playing, we'll take that. But we need to do more on the ball. We need to pass it more. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. There's a lot of stick from Steve Evans. Wouldn't expect anything else from someone from the west of Scotland. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's absolutely right there. They're just, you know, a little bit tentative in possession, and I think he's maybe talking about Torres and that far side, or the, the side closest to, to Steve Evans there, uh, playing in the left midfield. A couple of times he's had it on the ball, and he just wants to get his head down and go on some amazing dribble that he's going to beat five and six people, and maybe that's what his manager was making reference to with the ESPN cameras here. Everybody wants to be a hero, but not everybody can be a hero, it's a team game. Perhaps an opening here for Torres. And it's ended up being a very useful ball, but how about that for a challenge inside the area from Scott Cuthbert? Denying Bullman. Encouragement for Crawley. Able to latch on to it for the home side. Here's Austin. Let's carry a genuine menace in front of goal, Charlie Austin. Timlin. And Torres wasn't hanging about. Torres again. Pericard. There's Prutton. Number 29, David Prutton. Rose. And Richie for Swindon. Well, that takes off. Well, he makes a great run, actually, in behind Wilson, the fullback. It's got a bit of ball watching. This is the only chance the game really felt with this fella as well. Uh, great strike. Cowper says it's a bit of a dodgy start, beaten. Uh, nobody else near him. Uh, off the post twice and goes out for a corner and the referee gives a goal kick. Quite uh, incredible. The adventures of Michael Cowper's. <laughs> Meanwhile, Port Vale have the lead through Justin Richards against Accrington Stanley. So 1-0 in that match, we'll keep you posted as the evening progresses. Crawley and Swindon fighting for a place in the third round of the FA Cup, sponsored by E.ON. Incidentally, the draw for the third round is live on Sunday, five past six, you can follow it on Soccernet.com. Again, a replacement ball has had to be located. Brody competing for it. Twentieth appearance of the season for this man, Glenn Wilson. And Richie just nicking it away. McFadgen forward for Crawley. Nielsen's header. Now Masterton. There's a stumble there by Brody. He's lost his footing. Yeah, I mean, they haven't really probably got anything fizzed into that box for that fella Brody and Tubbs, the two uh, protagonists up front for uh, Crawley, the two guys that rely on for a lot of their goals, especially uh, Tubbs. They haven't really had anything for that pair really to attack in the, in the Swindon box up until now. There's Tubbs. Torres. Making the run. Go kick. 
might be getting a little bit frosty and talk. A few players uh, losing their footing at, at key times. Well, still, it says one degree Celsius. Right, we've long since given up believing that. I thought that was an iPod. <laughs> Good morning, is it? Don't usually mix Craig Burley and technology. Michael Timlin, a 25 year old, former Republic of Ireland under 21 international. Every time the ball goes towards the East Terracing. Seems that it's a case of a lost ball. Brody, one of the targets. McFadgen's up there as well. Mills taking that free kick. It's Morrison's header only as far as Torres. And Torres with that effort. Well, the initial piece of skill was uh, was excellent. It was absolutely excellent. Nice. Quick feet, nice change of direction just here. John Paul McGovern diving in. See you later, but that's really not an angle that you're going to score from, is it? Let's be honest. First efforts on goal from Steve Evans, Crawley Town. Here's Austin. Caddis. And Austin did well that time for Swindon. Pericard. And Austin. And that clears the stadium. Yeah, might have taken it on there. Charlie Austin. Bit of composure. I think that's what Danny Wilkes is saying. Pericard just making a nuisance heel on, on McFadden. Getting in. Could have taken the touch, might have taken another touch, could have maybe slipped it back to, to Pericard there as well. So had uh, a couple of different options that he might have used, but I think indicative of the first 35 minutes or so is when both teams get in and around the box, there's, uh, there's a, a, a lack of composure and quality, really. Well, somebody managed to find that ball. That went all the way over the... Roof just then. <laughs> Enter on was by Brody, followed by Morrison. Pericard showing off his combative qualities. McGovern. Looking for an outlet on the right, Caddis. The way by Howell for Crawley. Crawley can boast the tightest defence in the Blue Square Bet Premier. 16 conceded in all. Three shipped in the last five games. It's Cuthbert for Swindon. Lost one of the players waiting. Free kick. Business is brisk. Down there at the hot drinks, hot food stand. It's understandable as well on a night like this. Very much a pie and bovril sort of evening. Caddis. 
Once again, Mills taking charge back there for Crawley. Mills again. It's with the Rotherham side that lost in the League Two playoff final to Dagenham and Redbridge back in May. Pablo Mills. He's on loan from Rotherham. Couldn't keep it in. Gross! Bully, bully, bully! Gross, come on! McFadgen has judged that. Richie has run onto it. Oh, had to go Phil. Had to go Phil. Wilson, Glenn Wilson. He's got that told him down there. Not given anyway. Here's Nielsen. So one or two flashes from Nielsen in this first half. Brody's pass. And Morrison shepherds it back to his goalkeeper, Smith. Well, Richie certainly thought he was fouled. Yeah, I mean, he looks uh, quite a tidy little player. There's a little bit of contact. Might have been just toppling over a little bit before the, the leg was poked out by Wilson, but there certainly looked to be a little bit of contact. Anyway, nothing came of it. Was given. We'll stay with us during the half time interval here on ESPN. Ray Stubbs is in our mobile studio with John Barnes and Lou McCarry. Followed by Wilson. Brody is never going to get away with that. Rose going down. Yeah, I mean, I think just a bit of frustration, really. I think when you're the non-league side and you're not far off half time and it's nil-nil, you've, you've, you know, you've got to be happy to a certain extent. But I think uh, all the talk down here was that with what they spent and how they're playing the league, that uh, this Crawley side are really going to go for the throat of Swindon early on, and that's that's very much not happened. Uh, Cuthbert is penalised. Once again, Swindon have a bit of defending to do. Fadgen, the Crawley defender, has gone up for the set piece. Mills with it. The idea was to find McFadgen. Steve Evans said before this match he wasn't much interested in a replay, wanted it finished one way or the other. Torres, Howell first time. Wilson. Oh, that was very careless by Masterton. And it is a free kick. Mills trots away from the scene of the crime. And again, just sloppy play from, from Crawley in midfield. Pericard had made a run, but he ran into an offside position, so the ball could be uh, clipped over the top. And I've got to say, it's been a very uninspiring first half up to now. It's not exactly been cut and thrust, FA Cup, lower league, non-league, uh, pretty timid. Swinton trying to turn the screw, and Austin arriving, and covers! Did enough away by Mills and Crawley survive. Well, he did very, very well there, Cowpers, because Austin just sneaks round the back post here on the blind side of Pablo Mills, and that's a very good save. And from somebody who scored the amount of goals that Austin has, that was a very good chance, the best chance of the game by far. Position to take the corner for Swindon. And it Mr. Potter and it came back to Cuthbert. 
Well, it's a really strange position for uh, the Swindon players to take up at the corner kick. They were way at the back post, and let's have a look at this save again. Lovely ball clipped in. You can just see Austin gets off the back of Pablo Mills. Now, he could see him, he could feel him, but for some reason he let him go, and he does clear it in the end, Mills, but he gets lucky. It was a very good save. Reaction save from Cowpills, very much straight at him. I'm sure Ray, Lou and John will be talking a fair bit about Cowpills now half-time analysis. Stay with us for that here on ESPN. Just under two minutes to go to half-time. He's a big lad, Morrison, isn't he? the youngster number 14 for Swindon. He's coped uh, very well with Brody so far. They're not against each other directly, but he's he's come out on top in terms of uh, winning most of the headers. And that goes Rose for Swindon. He's confronted by Nielsen. Pericard, McFadgen, full-hearted defender, Carl McFadgen. Wasted ball by Rose. Danny Wilson. Swindon boss. I'm sure they get ready for his half-time team talk. Steve Evans, Crawley Town manager, 48-year-old Glaswegian. To win that second ball. Fadgin committing himself. Quickly taken free kick, but from the wrong position by Ritchie. And he's being told that by Rob Shoebridge, the referee. We will have one added minute in this first half. in by Rose for Swindon. Yeah. Well, Morrison had joined the attack. Well, he's a big lad, Morrison, and as I said a couple of minutes ago, he's, he's come out and top in the battle with Brody, the, the big Crawley striker. That to me, the free header in the, in the Crawley box, always difficult because he's got to generate the power uh, in the header as we're in half time. And it's even Stephen here. Matt Ritchie very unlucky not to score for Swindon. His shot coming back off the post twice. Austin had one opportunity as well, but the real story, the eccentric Michael Cowpers in goal for Crawley Town. Let's go to ESPN's Daryl Curry, who's with Steve Evans. Steve, what will you be saying to them as it stands? I can't even say it on air. You need to put the kids to bed. It's not been a good performance for us. We're sloppy. Um, but we'll, we'll address one or two things at half-time and they'll be evident very early in the second half. We've seen the good and the bad from your goalkeeper so far. Our goalkeeper's top class. You know, he's, um, you know, everyone knows Michelle Kuypers and they knows his, his weaknesses, perhaps his distribution on the floor. But he's an absolute top class goalkeeper to help us win the championship. So, we're, you know, we've played a good side here. Uh, we can't even forget that. But we've got one or two people that are maybe maybe playing to the cameras as, a play, as opposed to playing to the game plan. And we're going now and... Um, the ears will be a bit warmer, possibly, than what they are getting off. That's, that's not be shouting the ball, and they're just, you know, one or two getting carried away with the occasion. Thanks for your time. Pleasure. And with Steve Evans saying it as he sees it, nil-nil the half-time score, and Crawley keeper Mikel Kuypers will be relieved. He had a few iffy moments with his kicking, and he nearly scored with a header. But a few minutes ago, he really made up for it. It's anyone's cup tie. And we'll be back in a few minutes.
Bathurst Motorsport. And what a year it's been on ESPN. Motor racing legends wowed the crowds in the Sirocco Cup. There were thrilling climaxes to the Super League Formula and F3 Euro Series, while the battle for the GT1 World Championship couldn't be tighter. And in DTM, an exciting season comes to a climax this weekend with a title decider in Shanghai. The DTM title decider, live this Sunday on ESPN. In play betting at bet365.com because a lot can change in 90 minutes. Cards. Corners. Goals. The full-time result. Let's be honest. If it happens during the game, bet365 will have it covered. Hold up. The latest live odds are on your screen now. Bet365 offers over 50 in-play markets. Bet365.com. Bet in play. Now. You don't always have to be at NatWest to be at NatWest. In fact, more and more people are choosing to do their banking wherever, whenever. It's why we'll continue to provide UK call centres with staff on hand to help 24-7. It's why we give all of our online banking customers free security software. Our bank that helps you manage your money on the move. These are just some of the commitments in our customer charter that are helping us to become Britain's most helpful bank. To find out more, visit our website. NatWest. Helpful banking. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, out now. You know who I am. I know who you are. How will I recognize you? Oh, don't you worry about that. You'll know when I'm there. Your um. At every Curry's and PC World, get six months interest free credit on all laptops, desktops, and tablets, including Apple. Plus, trade in your old laptop and get £70 off any new laptop or desktop. There's already £140 off this HP laptop powered by AMD. 2 gig memory, only 299 or 229 with a trade-in. Save £110 on this Acer netbook with up to 7.5 hours battery life and Windows 7, just 229 Now at Curry's and PC World. Instant hydration with the new Wilkinson Sword Hydro. Water activated gel hydrates your skin as you shave, and five blades with skin guards help reduce irritation. Our best shave for your skin. New Hydro from Wilkinson Sword. Free your skin. Football tomorrow here on ESPN includes the Clydesdale Bank Scottish Premier League match between Dundee United and Rangers. That's from 50. Luxembourg, we're hearing. And on Sunday night at 7.45, it's the Serie A game between 7th place Palermo and 5th place Roma. More live Serie A on ESPN. The great thing about this
this competition is you never really know how the story will unfold. The shot comes in here from Austin. And it's Richie, and it's come back off the post again. Smith then trying to turn the screw, and Austin arriving, and covers. Did it off. Away by Mills. Crawley Town nil, Swindon Town nil, playing for a place in the third round, Lou Macari and John Barnes here at the Broadfield Stadium. OK, I, I think we know what's going on in the Crawley dressing room. Uh, not happy. <laughs> the manager certainly won't be happy, Ray, at the goalkeeper. I saw him after the, the first incident with the goalkeeper. Steve was out of the dugout telling him just to kick the ball. And I think he's learned his lesson now. I don't think in the second 45 minutes we'll see him dwelling on the ball at all. Yeah, what's your reading the game on balance, John? Well, I think both defences have been on top. You know, I think that um, I was looking forward to seeing Brody on tubs. But Morrison and Cuthbert have handled them well. Uh, Pericard is big, he's strong, um, putting himself about. Charlie Austin had a couple of opportunities, but there's not been that much quality. It's difficult because you can see the players falling over and it's quite slippery. But I expect to see better in the second half. Yeah, it's interesting. You started to see quite a few people slip. And you interesting you have develops. OK, Mikel Kuypers, 36 years of age, born in Amsterdam, a decade at Brighton, and wow, Lots very of early on in the game, you thought we were going to give this. Um, Really bad mistake. And also, away. you know, you want the team to start well, so this doesn't help. And to be honest with you, I think that. 30 um, seconds, I think. And Richie should have actually hit it first time. This is in the first 20 seconds. And if Richie hit that first time, as you can see, when it comes to him here, all he has to do is hit it. But he controls it, allows the defender to get back in. And that set the tone. So that's not a good that's not a good way to start off. And it really set the tone for Crawley. Can that really unnerve you as, as a team? Well, it certainly unnerved the goalkeeper, Ray, because he made a couple of mistakes after that. But they got away with it. You know, that's the FA Cup. Some to look at this. I mean, this is. He shouldn't do that, and this is when Steve came out of the dugout after this incident. He was out there telling them and leaving him in no doubt, just kick the ball up the pitch. Well, you know what? I'm just thinking, this shot comes back off his head, back off both posts, and very relieved. But then, they, just before the end, though, he did redeem himself, made a he really did. good save. They were it? fortunate there. That hit the post, it came back and hit him, and how often have we seen the ball come off the post, hit the keeper and growing the goal? Here it's hit him and gone back onto the post, but here, you can see the movement from Charlie Austin coming in, he makes a good save here, stands up well. That first one, Ray, should have been a corner, shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. you gave a well, goal kick, to, yeah. To be fair to the referee, he went to Danny Wilson as they were going in for half-time yeah. uh, and, and apologised. It, it's put Crawley on the back foot all that, hasn't it? It has, and, and I, said at, I said at the start that a lot of people were expecting Crawley to win this game. You know, and that maybe put them under a little bit of pressure because I won't say they're the favourites, but this is a closer contest than we've seen in the past, and, and they really haven't lived up to expectations. I think Steve will be disappointed with his strikers, Ray. They haven't tested Phil Smith once in 45 minutes, and they've been prolific in the league they're in. Yeah. They were just disappointed that they haven't tested them. Okay. Are you warm enough? Are you warm enough here? Pitch side. I am warm enough, thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's very kind of you. I'll tell you what, it's not too bad, actually, but if <laughs> no, you look at the not, thermometer, the thermometer says it's gone to zero. I think it might have broken you now. I think that no, would have broken I'm, I'm about nice 15, cold. 20 minutes ago. Uh, it's cold temperature-wise, but as far as the crowd are concerned here, well, uh, enjoying the pies. Everything to play for in this FA Cup tie, because if you win this game tonight, it could be Manchester United or Chelsea that land here for the third round. Second half on the way. Snowflake in my pocket, let's take a sleigh ride on the ice. Northern lights are glowing and reflecting in your eyes. Underneath the starry sky, dream with me this winter. Hello, George. Where am I? Make an educated guess. It's not my time. Maybe we could make an arrangement. An espresso. What else? Curve. 
every contour. <laughs> Philips new Sensor Touch 3D. Our most advanced shave yet. Need a hand, Gromit? These pies are going to fly off the shelf, lad. Go! Ooh, I've smashed it, Gromit. Do something. Hosting the World Cup in 2018 would be fantastic for everyone, especially Britain's small businesses. Gromit? Who ate all the pies? That's why Empower are backing the bed. <laughs> be blown away by the BT Autumn Deals. Get BT Total Broadband. And unlimited UK evening and weekend calls. For only £13.99 a month. Now absolutely free for the first three months. Call 0800 002 002 or visit bt.com slash autumn deals now. What do you get at the end of a week? A weekend. There are boys' ones. <laughs> Girls' ones. <laughs> and dirty ones. Whatever your weekend, make the most of it. Hey. With king-size beds, hundreds of city locations and on-site restaurants. From just £29, make your weekend a premier weekend. <laughs> premier in. Everything's premier but the price. If you move to another country, HSBC Premier could help set up your accounts before you get there, allowing you to access your money as soon as you arrive. <laughs> Live life without boundaries. HSBC Premier from the world's local bank. Big stadiums. Big money. Big stars. And the little guys. Oh, a screamer. Are just one step away. These days don't come along very often for non-league teams, so we're going to enjoy it. FA Cup second round, Troilston Leighton Orient, live Monday at 7 on ESPN. Well, welcome back in the FA Cup sponsored by Eon, second round tie. John Barnes and Lou Macari here, Crawley Town nil, Swindon Town nil, second half about to get going, players will be out any minute, we'll come on to the pitch, because I think it's starting to get a bit slippy, what do you think? Well yes, it's firming up, but it's a little bit in between, so that's when sometimes when the players put their foot down, it's soft, sometimes it's hard, and that's the most dangerous time, because you you'll get lulled into a false sense of security, because you can see it's got a bit of giving it, but it's quite greasy and hard on top as well. What do you think, Lou? Well, there's about five or six players in the first half, Ray fell over two or three from either side and it's only going to get worse in this half it's, you can tell already it's starting to get a lot firmer than it was at the start of the game and if somebody makes one slip makes one mistake they're out of the FA Cup yeah, does it come into your mind immediately you come out for the second half players on the way you think oh hang on a minute just then a little bit skiddy then there's a little that moment of doubt comes in your mind well a lot of players will be looking at their footwear you know you do it at the start of the game but at half time they'll be thinking do we change our studs do we wear Astros you know but but it's, it's a bit in between because it's still got a bit of giving it but it's still a little bit hard in places so it's, it's a in between one. John there's not That's a lot the, you can do with the footwear yeah, exactly, no. if you wear the wrong studs you go flying yeah and as, as I said in the first half there's probably six players went over at different times you just hope somebody doesn't make a, a big mistake and the yeah. team gets knocked out of the FA Cup. 
We've got a few moments. Go on, Barnes. Give us a few skills. Come on. You've got to do it. I've got my big boots on. Everyone see the boots I've got on. Last time I wore my nice shoes. You want to do the skills in these. Those days are over. Those days are over. You see, look, that's all I can do now. Go on, Lou. Put it in the back of the net. Too far, John. Back of the net for what? Itching yards. No chance. Second half on the way. Let's go back to Craig Burley and Derek Ray. I don't think we can follow that, Ray. Thank you very much. Our action tonight coming to you from the Broadfield Stadium. Crawley Town's home since 1997, when the old town mead ground was sold for redevelopment. After a bit more time there, folks, would have, would have got you Alan Titchmars down for a, for a ground report, but <laughs> he, Alan, was unavailable, so the three musketeers went down and told you it was a bit slippy, it looks a bit slippy, it's getting worse, obviously. He wasn't very good with those skills, was he? Is he getting shy? No comment. Second half is underway, and it's Swindon attacking the goal to our right. Certainly looked the likelier side in the first half. The League One outfit. I know Crawley Town chances to speak of so far in the second round confrontation. That goes Prutton together with Torres. Brody's header on, trying to dovetail with Tubbs. It's a massive weekend for the Swindon area as a whole. Swindon Super Marine facing Colchester tomorrow. Tonight the focus is on Swindon Town. Pass that time by Bullman. Wilson's always keen to go forward from right back. Masterton has had to cover for him. It did well that time, Masterton. And it's been pushed through to Tubbs. Excellent stop by Paul Smith. Playing against one of his former clubs. Well, he's had nothing to go on, Tubbs. Absolutely nothing. 16 goals in 20 appearances this season. No matter what standard of foot you're playing up, that's a great return. And that's a very good save from Smith. But Steve Evans said, you're going to see a different crawl in the second half because I'm going to get into the ribs of my players at half-time. And that's a much better start. First attempt on goal by Crawley, and it was more than respectable from Matthew Tubbs, who was the hat trick hero against Altrincham this weekend. The 7 0 win for Crawley. He's never got past the second round of the FA Cup in his career. Got to the second round with Salisbury back in 2006 2007. There's Tubbs again. Looking for Brody. Cuthbert covering for Swindon. He's been joined by Rose. Oh, that's by Pericard. Offside flag was up against Austin. Yep, just try to keep yourself on. It's, it's tight, he's off, he's just off. Again, Crawley there, a good line pushing up almost onto that halfway line there. I know Steve Evans said to Darrow just before half, just on half time that there would be no raised voices. I can't, I can't believe that. It's on there by Mills for Crawley, looking for Brody. Tubbs. Rose with the header away. Forcing his way through was Bullman. That's Cuthbert and company standing the ground. Well, he's looked at the linesman straight away, Brody, because uh, after the, the strike, because he, he thought he was off, he was close to being offside, got away with it. Uh, Richie. Richie will find on that shot in the first half that twice came back off the first. In the meantime, it's in back of Campers and the Crawley goalkeeper. Rose 
Rose with the throw. Terry Card. And Rose. John Paul McGovern. He's done awfully well. Just factually overhit. It was intended for Perry Card. That goes Morrison. Well, it's been a really bright start to this second half from Crawley. And that's what I was saying. He just he, he was offside there. He had a look after. Yeah. The chance coming with Bowman into the box, but good defending again from Cuthbert. Him and Morrison, as lads were saying at half time, did particularly well in the first half. But Derek, they just might find themselves under the cosh a little bit more in this second 45. Early change for Crawley as well. This uh, substitution is in the offing. It's forward here. By Rose for Swindon. Hey, hey. And they've got the substitute ready. So here we are, five minutes into the second half, and off is going Steve Masterton, replaced by Ben Smith. Turned to 32 just three days ago. Steve Evans perhaps here making a tactical shift. Well, he's gone straight into the same position, so it's, it's more of a personnel shift at the moment. Back by Nielsen. Forward by Wilson. Full of running, Danny Bowman. To the semi final stage of the FA Cup with Wigan Wanderers back in 2001. <laughs> 3,895 watching tonight here at the Broadfield. And Crawley certainly believe that they can knock out the League One side. Over there by Nielsen. And that's Caddis. That was remarkably cool. <laughs> Mills is very often favourite in the year, that time against Austin. Smith the substitutes. No problems this time for Cowper. Wasn't quite right for Torres. The Argentinian winning the throw. It's quickly taken in there by Smith. This pitch taking on more of a skating rink quality as the match unfolds. Danny Wilson getting his Swindon Town troops organised. It's never going to be easy, this, for the Robins. Almost by Nielsen. There's Pericard. In terms of possession in the second half so far, just look at that, Craig. 74% for Crawley. Well, I would say, isn't it? It's uh, an half time team talk from the Crawley manager. Hasn't, up to this point, hasn't fallen on deaf ears, has it? Because uh, it's been a much brighter start for Steve Evans inside in the second half. A couple of decent chances. Uh, some better play, getting it wide, getting it in the box, getting Brody and Tubbs in positions where if it drops uh, into an area they can at least get a bit of service and something to go on. They had absolutely no service and nothing in the first half to draw the strikers. Mills. McFadgen again was up there. Matt Ritchie. Cut off by Pablo Mills for Crawley. Richie again. Free kick. Richie going in on McFadgen. He's a little live wire, Richie, isn't he? Hit the post, obviously, in the first half. He 
Uh, he look, looks quite lively. The tidy left foot playing in that left side of a four. Not the biggest. It's got part of last season on low in Notts County. Another free kick forthcoming for Crawley Town. That means the heavy mob can get forward again. That includes McFadgett. Smith at the moment, five yards offside. It's taken by Howell. Mills was trying to put on a bit of pressure. Austin was the man back there defending for Swindon Town. Yeah, Mills just pressurised him there, just nudged him a little bit, made sure Derek Lee wasn't getting a free header. And this is a tricky little period for Swindon. Smith the substitutes. Pericard with a header away. Scoring in this second round tie. Charlie Town, the high flyers from the Blue Square Bet Premier. And Swindon Town, who've had their ups and downs in Empire League One this season. Torres just got his head to it. He's come to Pericard. John Paul McGovern. And Wilson. No difficulties there. Oh, oh, Richie. Could only angle it out of play. McFadgett. Guarded here in Crawley as the best of the defenders. Paul McFadgen. Tries to take command again. Wilson looking for options. And he's header on. Tubbs. Away by McGovern for Swindon. Slip was by Pericard. It's not the first, he won't be the last. Howell. Torres. There's an intelligent ball into the stride of Smith. Way in the end by Cuthbert. There's the task of holding things together at the back for Swindon. Scott Cuthbert. And you don't want to pause for very long out there. This biting Sussex evening. Powell. Look as though that had gone out. And apparently it had gone out. Well, well it had gone out to the referee, but the last one was referee's assistant should I say he was looking down the line and uh, got it to put his flag up as you can see it was out the whole ball went sneaked over the line there the referee spotted it assistant didn't there's Linden as the assistant on the near side it's going to be gathered by Phil Smith by Pericard, and Timlin's pass, Austin, there's McGovern, and Pericard won't get there. John Paul McGovern trying to set something up for Swindon Town. And Danny Wilson, Swindon, always on a hiding to nothing to an extent here. 
If they win, then the general opinion will be that's what they're expected to do. If they go out, full of memories of Histon a couple of years ago. And by Caddis. This Crawley Town, a very different proposition, really, from most non league teams. And resources at their disposal. Howell for Crawley. It will be a Swindon ball. Twice the referee said that Cuthbert's head off the back, he touched his head, which was to the amusement of the, the Crawley striker on both occasions. A of composure by McGovern here for Swindon Town, looking to release David Brutton. That's a big start by Mills. This has gone. See, I think this is one of these occasions where Brutton's just going, going over there and he sees through his experience, he sees Pablo Mills sort of busting in, trying to get too tight, and just he sort of gets his body in front of Mills there, and he bundles him over. And, and really, Pablo Mills have been played at the, the level he's played at, and for the clubs he's played at, uh, should have known a little bit better there. McGovern with it for Swindon. It's away by Torres. He succeeded in picking out Tubbs. Bowman, slipping and racing through the middle here for Crawley. And the way in the nick of time by Phil Smith. Well, it's <laughs> ambitious to say the least. From a long way out, Tubbs thought he had might as well try. McGovern, this is Caddis. And Torres is the player who went back. He got the last touch. Little squirrel of pressure from Swindon Town. Cuthbert and Wallison both up for the corner. Cuthbert tried to time his jump. And Rose would have felt that. Tough competitor. Told to go back a few yards. Oh, Rob Shoebridge, the referee, putting a word with Rose. Springing over Brody as well. Hey. Go into it. Still standing. Free kick given against Rose. Morrison is on Brody this time. There is Morrison. He's won just about everything in the air. The young defender. Almost came out towards Smith, the Crawley Town substitute. Dean Howell. Former Aldershot player. Howell released by Aldershot back in August. Torres, the one that got away. Sergio Torres. He's always wanted to play his football in England. It was on his mind as a youngster. He funded his own trip here when he came to England for the first time. A trial with Brighton and Hove Albion. McGovern. Back 
goes Howell. Well went by McFadgen. And Cuthbert right on top of Brody. I thought that was a free kick. Over the back of the big striker there. Could never win it. Never going to win it. No complaints from Brody though, I've got to say. Surprised at that. Well, Bullman. Richie for Swindon. And it's Pericard. And McFadgen did his job. Yeah, I just anticipated it well, reads this very well here. Again, it's Richie who's arguably been Swindon's best player. That's good defending. That ball's halfway to Gatwick Airport as we speak. He's launched it out the ground. Yes, we are very far away from Gatwick. Takes it for Swindon, and Cuthbert tried to steal it towards goal, and it's come back in here. And Crawley breathe a big sigh of relief. Well, I don't know how he finds this amount of space, Cuthbert. I, I, Dean Howell, I think it's Howell, the, the left back, just sort of looks away. I don't know where he's trying to look at it, but he's not watching the man. As soon as he just glanced away, Cuthbert was gone. Oh, waiting inside, the penalty area. Cleared off the line. And again this time. Austin for Swindon. Charlie Austin, the top scorer. A timely goal. And joy for the little knot of Swindon Town fans who have made the journey to Sussex. Well, they came out in the second half, Crawley, and they really showed a, a great deal more impetus and a great deal more threat, but they haven't really looked comfortable uh, from these cross balls into the box. I think it was Bullman that gets away. Smith that got that clear initially. It was almost over the line just here. And does his job, but again, nobody picking up Austin, who really didn't do anything but just anticipated where the ball might drop down to. And that's a great volley from Austin. Keeps it down, does everything right. And Kepler's no chance with it, absolutely no chance. Scruffy little sequence in the lead-up, with an emphatic finish from Charlie Austin. And Swindon have the lead. And the importance of Charlie Austin to Swindon Town hasn't lost on the manager. Austin delivers for his boss again. Well, what sort of response will that elicit from Crawley Town? Here's Tubbs. Play on. Well, he almost managed to get on the end of that one. Prutter. It's watching as it runs back to Smith. A disappointment for Steve Evans. Crawley have given it a bit more of a go in the second half. Shot by Tubbs early on in this half, forcing a fine stop from Smith. But now they are one goal in arrears. A little bit of hesitancy that time by Wilson, but no price to pay. Oh, good header again from Morrison there. Really has been impressive along with Cuthbert back in the middle of that Swindon defence. Forward by Timlin. Oh, Cuthbert. Powell wanted it. Just waving off Torres. Mills. McFadgen. Bullman. It wasn't closed down initially. 
And it's Wilson, and Tubbs with the header on Torres, and the shot comes in from Smith. And it's saved by Swindon's Smith. Well, that's much better play. And Bowman getting forward, just sucking them in, able to play the full back in. Decent ball in, uh, in the end, just dropped it to Ben Smith, the substitute, takes it first time. Technically, very did very well, actually, because it just sort of dropped at him. Didn't want to get it on target, but it was always comfortable for the Swindon goalkeeper. But a decent response from Crawley. Ben Smith's first club was Arsenal. Back in the mid-90s. Came through the ranks there. As though Thomas Dosevi is going to come on for Swindon Town. Tugger Easer to Russell. Cuthbert with the concession of the free kick. Pericard has been nursing a groin injury. So the likelihood is he will depart. Wilson and McFadgen together, as it's swept in by Mills, Cotton's header away. Torres, now Howell. McFadgen, looking for support to his left. Cadiz had moved over to deal with the threat. Dean Howell, Pablo Mills, so that's trying to cause havoc, the shot by Torres, could have gone anywhere, has actually gone out for a throw, that's how wide it was. And Swindon want to make this change now. Thomas Dosevi on for Vincent Pericard. He's got through a power of work. He's been struggling for fitness. So Dosevi is on. The 31 year old recently rejected. Call up by Togo to concentrate on his career at Swindon Town. We're here by McGovern. Chargers on for Austin. Just couldn't keep control of the ball. Austin's goal the difference in this second round tie in the FA Cup, sponsored by Eon. Howell. Snapped on by Smith. He's almost there for Brody. We have live football coming up on Sunday here on ESPN and the Clydesdale Bank Premier League, Dundee United against the leaders, Rangers, on the air from 11.15. And then in the FA Cup on Monday, Droylston against Leighton Orient. Monday from 7. Droylston is trying to soldier on here. Swindon have just replaced one striker. The man who started up front beside Charlie Austin, Vincent Pericard. Well then, the referee had a good view of that. Richie's on the ground. Down just as he moved towards Nielsen. Yeah, knee in the back there. It's a bit naughty, isn't it? He might, he might be saying I, I was trying to get out the way. <laughs> They're all friends in the end. <laughs> so it's supposed to work out. And then looking for the second goal that might make sure 
Cotton. Cotton decided to have a go. Torres. He's had the confidence to play his way out of trouble. The one from Mar del Plata. And Tubbs. Cuthbert came to meet him. McGovern. They approach the final 15 minutes here at the Broadfield Stadium in Crawley. Bullman's pass. What do the Blue Square Bet Premier side have left? Brody. That's got, to be, that's got to be a free kick again. I mean, that's cut it again. To be fair, he, he sort of looks at the referee, but he's never really complained. Uh, and I think he's got a lot of reasons to complain at times. We one or two challenges that uh, have been a little bit late. They've not been nasty, they've not been cynical, just been late. And he hasn't got his free kicks round about the edge of the box for him. And he's caught the figure of a big, honest fellow, Brody. Here's Torres running at the Swindon defence, and there's the equaliser from Tobbs. Just like that. The piece of inspiration the Crawley Town supporters were hoping for. It's 1-1. Well, you know, I just wondered about this lad, Tubbs, uh, how he's got all these goals. And I think in that one moment, in that split second, probably told you everything you need to know about this lad. Because it's an absolutely wonderful finish. Torres comes in off that left-hand side, just pokes it in, gets a little way, bit away from Morrison, but he's got absolutely nowhere to go. He's got no room to manoeuvre. And all he does is he dinks it with the outside of his boot to get the angle, to get the little bit of cut spin. Unbelievable finish, great finish. And Daryl Curry's downstairs with Steve Evans. Steve, exactly what you needed at that time of the game. Yeah, we were all hanging a bit after the goal. Um, I thought about to second half, we were a lot better. Um, probably their goal came against the runner play for me, but we got sloppy. Um, we got Matt Tobbs, you've always got a chance in any game. You know, the boy's an incredible finisher. But, you know, it's, it's a cup tie that can go either way now. Do you stick with this as it is right now? Can we're you change gonna, it? We're going to change it in a couple of minutes, yeah. What's the change, do we know? Uh, yeah, we're going we're to take Scotty Nielsen off and we'll bring a young man on from, uh, from Queen's Park Rangers. Unless Brody goes and sticks out in the end. <laughs> Thank you. And here they come again, Crawley, it's Brody. There, this was an absolutely wonderful finish from Tubbs. I've got to say that. He's just hardly in it to go on the lad. Now, that's a great first touch. Now, he's crowded out there because he's got Rose the full-back and he's got Morrison, the big centre-back, who has been excellent. The first touch is great. And the second one, well, it's something you dream about. Keep the heads, he's saying. He's back in the game. He's side back in the game. And, boy, you can see now why that's 17 goals for that fellow this season. Great return. Prolific goal scorer, Matthew Tubbs. He's levelled this contest, and Torres, who had a hand in that goal. Really got like a man possessed here. Tubbs again. And Smith just losing out to Timlin. You heard Steve Evans mention from Delay Belbadji, the 18 year old. He's poised to come on. But here they come again. Crawley Town, can they take the lead? Bowman was waiting to finish off the move. Well, there's two. There's two uh, I think Tubbs, Tubbs and Brody actually got in, in the way of each other uh, in the edge of the box, so they only really had, had Smith in there. Uh, Brody was suggesting there was an elbow uh, as well, but he looked to me as if he, he collided with his own player, and, and that really thwarted a, a great attack. You can just see it. Well, actually, it's, uh, it's Cuthbert, it just does him. Uh, Cuthbert nudges Brody out of the way, and then Brody falls into uh, the goal scorer Tubbs, uh, and that really stopped him in the track, so he had every reason to complain again. They're not worried about the cold weather. Another change to be made by Swindon. One is coming, Alan Sheehan, a 24-year-old Irishman. Is going Michael Rose. And Sheehan was a member of the Leeds United side that lost to Histon a couple of years ago in the FA Cup. Danny Wilson's men were leading, but now it's all square.
Austin. Away by Wilson. The ball sent over from the right earlier was from Nielsen. We heard from Steve Evans that he's about to be replaced by Abdullah Belbaji, who's on loan from Reading. That just went through yesterday. He's an exciting young prospect. Just over ten minutes to go, and it's in the balance. Forward by Howell. Real sense of feel good enveloping the Broadfield Stadium now. Torres, risky header. Sure, Howell won't be thanking him for that. And Sheehan, who has just come on, is tangling with Brody. Brody, the big man from Gateshead. He's scored three goals in his last three games. Ball all the way. Campers there to claim it. Tom's there with Cuthbert backing off now. Cuthbert. It's Morrison, usually the man to win the headers. It's come alive, this cup tie, in the second half. Chances of the first 45 minutes were few and far between. Deceni. Trying to nip in there behind Mills. She in with the throw. Tim Lynn. It's Caddis with the pass. Dosevi. It's clever play. And by McGovern, just slipping as he released the ball. At the moment, this tie is heading for a replay at the county ground in a week and a half's time. Brotten. Also went back there. And a bit of bumping and barging, and perhaps an arm on the ball as well. Bob Shoebridge unmoved. Morrison for Swindon. To Sevi. A heavy shot takes the deflection. Will be a corner to Swindon Town. Tension building here. Seven minutes remaining. Cooper's remained on his line in there by Timlin. What was from McFadgen. That well, certainly been a bit nervy for them, Crawley from set pieces, that's where obviously they lost the initial goal at the really, really trailing Swindon from that very good Austin strike. Richie, and it's Austin with a header. Austin again. It's confronted by Torres. Frantic inside the penalty area. Sergio Torres, not a good out of play. Belbaji is going to come on. The next stoppage in play. Tim Lynn and McFadgen. 
Just ahead of Dosevi. Nielsen couldn't keep it in. Well, Steve Evans did tell Daryl Curry that Nielsen would be going off. There's confirmation. Nielsen makes way for Abdullah Belbaji. Crowley Town beating the loan transfer deadline to sign him. Got the approval from the Reading boss, Brian McDermott, allowing Steve Evans to field him in this cup tie. And the words on Belbaji is... There's a bit of skill about him and a lot of pace. Shirt looks just a size too big for Belbaji. There were special circumstances. Let's just join the club on loan. Forward by Cowpers. It's missed time against jump that time, Belbaji. following through and Smith was sure footed Austin and Smith getting back quickly that time for Crawley Slightly not what either side wanted. The replay. Steve Evans was quite vocal about that before a ball was kicked. He's quite keen for a decision one way or the other. It's going to be another change for Crawley. Craig McAllister coming on. Callister, a 30-year-old Scot. Morrison, one of the attacking weapons for Swindon at the set-piece. Oh, well, has moved away from him now, it's Mills who's picking him up. And Mills doing his job, and here's Torres. Torres racing away from McGovern. Looked a bit perplexed. Brody. And Brody's managed to cut it back. Well, he did well that time, Brody, against Caddis. Inside the final three minutes of normal time. I'm sure Steve Evans will be much happier with his second half effort by Crawley. That's what he thought of. The first half display, which was a bit lacking in flair. Turner just seemed to get clipped by Timlin. Powell has made himself available to the left of Bullman. Still he uses Wilson on the right, and it's Brody. Now Belbaji. We've given him the big build-up. There you go. You did. <laughs> Thank you for that, Greg. You're welcome. <laughs> the change here. Uh, McAllister will come on. Craig McAllister. Scored the winner against Newport. In their fourth qualifying round. And it's the end of the shift for Richard Brody. Well, he's run his legs off. McAllister doesn't have long to make an impact. Much better spectacle in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. Much more of an open game.
crowd of just under 4,000 have enjoyed themselves the Crawley Town supporters and well, it wasn't struck well enough by Smith he's been lively since he came on Smith is it and the substitutes get forward got in the box caused a few problems John Paul McGovern about to go on it's going to change and it's one Scottish player for another of course John Paul McGovern on comes Simon Ferry signed from Celtic during the summer by Danny Wilson time at the end of the game now the replay beckons Wilson's long throw for Crawley we will have three additional minutes this is the scenario that Steve Evans desperately wanted to avoid he wasn't interested in a replay, he said. Might just have to deal with one now. Well, Torres went sliding in. Quickly taken free kick by Swindon. Forward by Ritchie and Dosebi. Scoring foul of the referee. I think what we've seen here tonight, Derek, is uh, a game that's been, you know, pretty even, Stevens between both sides, but it's been a tale of, of two strikers, two strikers in form, one uh, for Swindon, Charlie Austin, who gave him the lead with an excellent volley, and then Tubbs, the talisman for Crawley, 16 goals coming into the game, making that 17 now with a, a wonderful equaliser, just executed brilliantly to give Crawley hope. To stoppage time. Howell. It's an excellent ball. Almost came back into the path of Smith. Timlin did well. Ferry. Only once before of Crawley Town defeated a Football League club in the FA Cup. That football League club being Northampton Town. Look at the 1991-92 season. Frantic instructions from Steve Evans. Well, they might be able to give it one last push. I'm surprised to see McFadgen. Stride his way up there, McAllister has joined him. Mills with it. Bell Badgie. There's Timlin. Person couldn't make anything happen for Swindon. Gone past the three minute mark and added time. Bell Badgie. will go to a replay they will meet again at the county ground after a spirited 1-1 draw good to see that display of sportsmanship between the two managers Swindon scored first through Charlie Austin but Matt Tubbs cancelling that goal out Crawley Town 1 Swindon Town 1 in the second round of the FA Cup sponsored by E.ON Michael Cowper's was the story in the first half because of his eccentric qualities 
But he is a fine goalkeeper, and he did demonstrate that from time to time in the course of this match for his manager, Steve Evans. The Crawley manager did make the point before a ball was kicked. That the replay, as far as he was concerned, was the worst of all worlds, but that is now what he has to contend with. They will do it again in Wiltshire a week and a half from now. Let's go to ESPN's Daryl Curry. Darryl. Matt, that goal, what a difference it made in the second half, but did you feel it was coming? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, had a, we had a bit of a hairdryer at half-time and, um, you know, uh, we come out the blocks and, you know, we put them on the back foot and we tried to turn them, which we did. And, you know, the goal came at a good time for us. Was that not the real Crawley we saw in the first half? No, definitely not. I mean, um, you ask every, every fan here who comes week in, week out, you know, uh, we don't play like that, um, you know, and they know that. And, uh, you know, it was a uh, you know, good all-round performance against, you know, a good team. Your manager didn't want a replay. How do you feel about it? Oh, it's going to be cold, isn't it? But, <laughs> no, uh, you know, to get a result against you know, a team like Swindon, you know, it's great. Uh, it's not only great for ourselves, it's great for the fans and the club as well. Charlie, when you scored that goal, did you feel yeah. you could have pushed on potentially and got a second at that point? Yeah, you know, we um, looked like we was on top, scored that goal, and we should have pushed on, tried to get a second, you know. Fortunately, we didn't, and um, the Crawley went and equalised. How impressed were you by the way they responded in the second half? Yeah, you know, real, real good, you know. Um, there's a battle inside, obviously, you can see, and obviously they're not in their league position for no reason. And non-league teams always up against league teams. It's going to be difficult for the league side, but Crawley did themselves justice. What do you expect from the replay? What can you do differently in that leg? Um, yeah. I'm not really too sure approach it the same as we did. Go at them, obviously we'll be at home. Hopefully um, maybe get overwhelmed by it, but it'll be worth a, it's obviously a tie we didn't need. Yeah. OK, well, two goal scorers tonight. Matt, you are the man of the match. Can I ask you to do the, the honours, Charlie? Right, right, right. Cheers, Cheers, Thank you, Ken. Cheers. Cheers. Great endeavour from both clubs. Uh, let's get some news of more live football matches lined up for this weekend and beyond here on ESPN. On Sunday from the Clydesdale Bank Scottish Premier League, Dundee United versus Rangers from 11.15. On Sunday night, it's Serie A from 7.45. Seventh place, Palermo against fifth place, Roma. More FA Cup action on Monday night. The last of the second round ties sees non-league's Royalston take on League One, Leighton Orient. Four Europa League matches lined up for next week. On Wednesday, Sampdoria against PSV Eindhoven. And for Manchester City's group, it's Lech Poznan against Juventus. On Thursday, Liverpool will try to secure qualification into the knockout stage of the competition with a win away in Romania against Stau Bucharest. Also on Thursday, Palermo have to beat Sparta Prague to stay in the tournament. So, efforts, attitude and commitment from both Crawley and Swindon in the cup. League One Swindon looked like they'd nicked the victory. They led with 15 to go. But a great finish from Crawley's Matt Tubb set up a grandstand finish. 30 league plays between these clubs, but they finished a level tonight. Reaction on the way. A little smile. A word of cheer. A little gift from one held dear. Best wishes for the coming year. In December on ESPN Classic. Get it on Sky Channel 429 and Virgin 533. And some call it coma toasted. Snatch your juice out you like my words is osmosis. Get it, get it, won't stop. Go cop, go get it. Better ask about it. We can scrap, we can rap, we can blast about it. Either way it go, I'm still gonna get my cash without it. So don't stop, get it, get it, won't stop. Go cop, go get it. Better ask about it. We can rap, we can scrap, we can blast about it. Either way it go, I'm still gonna get my cash without it. So don't stop, get it, get it, won't stop. Go cop, go get it. Better ask about it.
You don't always have to be at NatWest to be at NatWest. In fact, more and more people are choosing to do their banking wherever, whenever. It's why we'll continue to provide UK call centres with staff on hand to help 24-7. It's why we give all of our online banking customers free security software. And why we offer mobile banking that helps you manage your money on the move. These are just some of the commitments in our customer charter that are helping us to become Britain's most helpful bank. To find out more, visit our website. NatWest. Helpful banking. experience all that Scotland has to offer. To plan your winter break, go to visitscotland.com slash white. Poker will never be the same. It will change the game forever. Rush Poker is going to revolutionize the way people play poker. You always have to think, think, think. Lots of hands, lots of action. Rush Poker is excitement. Four or five times as many hands per hour. Because it's constant action. You always have a hand. Can't wait to get back to the table. It's exhilarating. There's more hands, more action. Why wouldn't you want to play Rush Poker? Experience the rush only on FullTiltPoker.com. This is Aiden Boyle. The man who lives his life as the crow flies. Even his initials say A to B. Hello. Hi, Aiden. And here in Clonmel, they wouldn't have him any other way. You see, Clonmel is the home of Magnus Cider. Okay. Good morning, Aiden. Good morning. And that is where Mr. Boyle comes in. He's the man who drives the apples to the cider mill. And everybody here knows that the quicker those apples are pressed, the fresher the juice that makes the Magnus. Which is why you'll often hear people say, there's method in the Magnus. Hello, George. Where am I? Make an educated guess. It's not my time. Maybe we could make an arrangement. An espresso. What else? Town won, Swindon Town won in the FA Cup, sponsored by Eon. Replay needed. They've got to try again for a place in the third round. Lou Macari and John Barnes. Um, decent second half. I think they've Much sort better. of really, really picked their game up. Much better, particularly for Crawley, because they, you know, they started on the front foot in the second half. Toads made a great run. Um, good save by the goalkeeper. And, and I have to say they were probably the better side in the second half. Here's uh, Steve Evans <laughs> on his way over to join us. <laughs> Plodding away. I wonder what he says about the pitch when he gets over. Telling me I'm not long. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder what he's thinking as he's turning it over in his mind he'd as he happy. comes towards us. Does he look happy? He'd be happy because after the first half performance, he'd been disappointing, and second half they really took the game um, to the opposition and, and, and deserved deserved their equaliser. So, what was the story of the game as far as you were concerned, Lou? Two great goals, Ray. When you look at the, both the goals again, Charlie Austin, not a great deal to aim at, and the crawl equaliser, brilliant outside of his right foot. You wouldn't see two better goals in a game. We'd wait to the second half for a couple of goals, but they're worth waiting for. And they were the informed strikers. You know, we're looking for we're looking for Brody and Tubbs, and we're looking for Charlie Austin and Perry Card. 
and Austin delivered on solid tops. Uh, Broly was a bit disappointing, but as, as, as you know, Lou says, two fantastic finishes. Hey, Steve, Steve, come and join us. Thank you very much for Steve. Well done, mate. Well done, Steve. Thank you very much. Settling for a draw near the end, weren't well you? Done, mate. <laughs> well, I think it was. Uh, I think it was the first half we we didn't really play as we could, and I think one or two thought ESPN being here, but um, <laughs> we had words in the dressing room at second half and I think by far the second half we, we probably deserve to win the cup tie. What's the summary of the message you gave them at half time? Um, too much respect for Swindon, mm -hmm. forget the TV cameras and players we'd play for playing a team in the Blue Square Premier mm -hmm. and if we do that we get on the ball and we pass it and we get nice width in our team and we get more from our front too. You know, service was poor in the first half, we felt. Mm. And we get a bit closer to the boy Pruton in the middle of the park, who was, who was running things for me for half an hour. Mm. And I think we sorted that out in the second half, and I, this cup tie's far from over, Ray, I can assure you. That's what we actually said. You know, we said first half would have been disappointing. We expected a lot from them. But second half, you know, you played from through midfield, you passed yeah. the ball well, and you created shots on tubs. Two great, I mean, Austin's goal was fantastic as well, but Tubbs was a great finish. Well, for me, both, both I think, as I said to, to Lou privately before the game, John, I think, I think both could play in there. The Premiership, uh, the Championship, not Premiership. You've got right back in the game when, when they settled. I think it was the best spell of the game when they, yeah. when they got the goal. Um, I was disappointed with the first phase of that. I think. We well, you know, switch here, off. here, what they're highlighting there is we've always got this debate between zonal marking and man for man marking. There's a big space for him to run into, and obviously we thought that you know you cleared it. But when it falls to Charlie Austin here, there's a lot of bodies. You can't. Walk, goalkeeper is unsighted, but it's a great technique. Great. You know, you know the room that he finds in the box there, John. I mean, you've played at the top level. Unless you're a natural goal scorer, you don't find that room. Yeah, yeah. You find yourself against a body. And um, but Austin's, a, uh, we said if if we don't get the first touch in the box, Austin will got the second. But I think that's Mills the second. Mills was a bit unlucky there, Steve, because the ball's bounced off his chest, chest. on his, and then he gets out almost to Charlie Austin, yeah. but just doesn't quite get there. Well, I, I agree. I think there's a lot of League One managers tonight who would be happy if they'd Mills and McFadden. Yeah. Mm. You know, when you look at Austin and, and Pericard, who was a handful yeah. first half mm. with strength. Yeah, Mills won man in the match and deservedly so yeah. because he can. I was hearing you talk about Austin that he was one of those players you'd seriously take, taken a look at, but uh, the finish from Tubbs was sensational. Well, we, I mean, we we paid um, decent money for non-league. Don't in, tell us that much. I thought you were going to tell us then. <laughs> you have to take it early. It's a great well, finish. As much as people thought, but you know what? He, he's impressed us since the day he come. He scored against some real quality in pre-season, QPR, Palace, all the proper championship clubs, and, and Tubbs could play at championship yeah, level. But it's a great ball from Torres as well. I know you're signing everyone. You didn't think that was when the chairman were signing Torres. You didn't think it was Fernando, <laughs> did you? <laughs> but he well, played like him tonight because of the great through ball and he was very good all night, Torres. Well, there wasn't a problem with green terms with the Americans to get Torres. It was, <laughs> it was Fernando himself. Right, yeah. What would you say to your goalkeeper at half-time, Steve? Um, well, you're going to put it here. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, we, you know, he's, uh, I think I said to you, we, we know he's got a distribution problem on the deck, but he said some wonderful saves tonight mm. and he's probably kept us in it in the, mm. in the first half of one or two saves, but you know one or two things we tried to put positionally right to half time, but we, we also said to them, you know, we, we're now now here with Swindon League One, we've not played they, they think they, they, they've dominated, but we know we've not played, so the message to the guys was let's make sure when the supporters leave here and the Spain cameras get derigged, that they know that there's a Crawley Town team who are half decent and mm. we've shown that I think Stick, stay, stay with us for a little bit longer, please, because we just want to hear from Danny Wilson, see what he thinks. Danny, what did you say to the, the boys after that game? That was a hard-earned draw for us, you know, quite honestly. You know, that's, uh, before we, we, uh, we kicked the ball in anger, this was a tough tie for us, we said that. You know, and it, uh, and it panned out that way as well. Um, when you get your nose in your front, as we did, you know, we thought we could, we could really hold on to it at least, you know, or take it further. But again, persistence from their point of view, so you've got to tip your hat to them. Um, our keepers pulled off a great save, I have to say, just prior to that. But um, it was on us even, you know, quite honestly, uh, on, a, on a tricky night as, a, as the weather started to deteriorate at the night. The pitch become a bit more slippy, very difficult, bobbly. Um, but overall, it was a good FA Cup tie, wasn't it? They pushed hard. They don't really look like a non-league side, do they? No, they don't, do they? You know, that's, uh, they've got to take some stopping, I would I expect, in their league. And, uh, and the tie's not over yet by any stretch. You know, they've had some very good away performances this year and results. I think from our point of view, you know, it's, um, I think the nice thing is we know what's in front of us now. It's not, uh, we've not come from the unknown, you know, and, uh, and, and players didn't know who who they were playing against or what they were playing against. Now they've got a good idea and they know it's going to be a very tough tie at our place. So from what you've learned tonight then, how do you approach that second match? Very positively again. You know, we, we came here to win the game. You know, and I think we'll do exactly the same at their place. But but obviously I think one or two of the players will understand what they're playing against. You know, and, and that's when you have that little bit of information in front of you, um, you know, you can be a bit more understanding of what's required of you. Danny, thanks for your time. No problem, thank you.
I can tell both clubs are revved up now for the replay immediately. So much at stake for a place in the third round. When you got your equaliser, all of a sudden you could see it gave you a bit of momentum and you had a chance straight after that. Yeah, I think I think he just know expected it to come to him and I, and I thought, like John said off here, is that a diving header maybe puts it in the net. But yeah, it's um, a bit of a deflection as it comes to him. And he tries to bring it yeah, down on his chest. Yeah, he's, we're all, I think we're unlucky there. I think it's um, maybe, maybe a heavy touch. Yeah, heavy touch. If, he, if Danny would normally take that and slot it, but I think Danny's, Danny Wilson summed it up right there. They, they know a lot more about us, but we know, know a lot more about them. And, you know, we, we fancy ourselves going to Swindon. We, we don't have a problem with that. You know, we go there and we play like we played second half. This is a proper cup tie, still alive. Yeah. And on balance as well, it's all part of a learning curve. I know you're set up as a, as a League One club already, the big investment, but as you're saying there, you're getting used to the cameras, getting used to situations like this. It's all part of the process forward. Well, we're, we're all learning every day, Ray. You know, it's a, it's a tough challenge to, to win at the top of the conference when you consider the, the quality of clubs like Luton and, mm. and Wrexham and, and Wimbledon. And there's, there's a host of them that we could name. But, you know, we'll look to strengthen in the January transfer really? market yeah. if we can. Yeah. Um, the difficulty, of course, is finding players that quite genuinely are better than we have. And, you know, because there's a whole raft of things come into that, as, as Lou and John know, the transfer fee and then the terms. But we'll try if we can. You know, we've got nice and lean in recent weeks. We're putting players on loan and, and one or two have gone the opposite way. So, you know, we're, we're ready to act, but we're, we're working hard now to identify those those targets. You're in the draw on Sunday now. Can I tempt you to say, in an ideal world, what you'd like? I know you've got to win the replay first. Well, you know, <laughs> I'd, I'd love, obviously, to draw one of the big premiership clubs. Um, At home or away? Um... I suppose if you're the chairman, you say away. <laughs> um, if you're Steve Evans, you say us, because we're, we're bullshit enough to think, perhaps, Ray, that we could we could do well in it. You know, we, we've, we, we're we really pleased that we're still in this cup tie because we fancy ourselves at Swindon, mm. and we hope you join us. Thank um, you for coming over to join us. Thank you very much. A good luck for the replay. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, John. Uh, that is it. Great cup tie here tonight. The draw on Sunday on Soccernet, five past six. See you soon. Bye for now. Excitement, isn't it? It's the FA Cup. He's got a classic on the score, isn't it? The great thing about this competition is you never really know how the story will unfold. The shot comes in here from Austin. Trichy! And it's come back off the post again. Austin arriving. And Carveras did it off. And again this time. Austin! Here's Torres running at me. Swing the defence. Casting live, this is ESPN. They are the protectors of Paris.